know, they're playing good football right now. They beat the 49ers. Uh, you know, they've uh, they've come on as the season's gone, and then, uh, you know, they're playing with a lot of confidence right now. They got some good players over there. They have, you know, quite a, quite a talent on the offensive line, and, you know, Chris Carter's a good young quarterback. They have two, two Rockets on the at the receiver position, so, you know, they have a nice offense. This is an important game for a lot of reasons. First of all, we, we discussed this early in the week. Last ball game of the year. You ended on a high note. We've got the ability to go 500 the last four games of the year. And that correlates into the next year. The last game does. Last game ever in this dome. So it'll be a, a, a quite an atmosphere. And tomorrow's finale will also reunite current Cowboy Aaron Gibson with his former team. He was cut from the Lions in midseason, and he admits that it will be a little odd playing against his former teammates, about as odd as the season has gone for them. Yeah, actually I am, because, uh, you know, when we were up there, even when I was up there, uh, we were losing, but it wasn't, it wasn't by that much, and it, wasn't, it was for reasons that, you know, they thought they could fix, so I'm still surprised that only one win really came out of that. I don't really know what it's going to be like. I assume it's going to be like playing against guys I played in college that are in the league now. You know, uh, just having fun, really. It makes it even more fun because you're playing with guys you know. Unfortunately, to only be able to speak uh, for a decade about one playoff win um, doesn't accomplish much, but it was such a significant one. The toughest part to remember about the 91 season is that Dallas Cowboys, I think, were coming off of following season, a 1-15 in season and uh, went on to win three Super Bowl uh, championships after that, and, uh, and we didn't get any. One guy who won't carry any shining memories with him when he walks out of the Silverdome for the final time will be the head coach. Given all that's going on here this year, are you going to miss this place at all when it's all over with? Well, not necessarily. In fact, I'm freezing right now. <laughs> uh, unusual year that way as well. Uh, this team has been through about three years' worth of... Uh, uh, of, of, of crazy things that happened. This is the last time I'm going to say this. From the Silverdome, Mickey York for your Detroit Sports Report. Close to $56 million, taking 36 months to build. Completion was right on time and right on budget. The Lions officially opened their new football home on October the 6th, 1975, against America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. Detroit came in with a 2-0 record, but the soon-to-be NFC champ boiled the housewarming with a 36-10 victory over the new pride of Pontiac. Fast forward four years, Thanksgiving Day 1980. The Lions become a part of NFL history. They were knotted at 17, headed to overtime with the Bears. An overtime that would take no time at all. Chicago's David Williams takes the opening kickoff and takes off 95 yards to pay dirt. The Bears win 23-17 in the quickest overtime game in NFL history. On to November 17th. 1991, one of the darkest days in Dome history. On that day, Mike Utley went down awkwardly on a routine block in a game against the L.A. Rams. Nothing has been routine for Utley ever since. But when he gave his emotional thumbs up while being carted off the field, it proved to be an inspiration to his teammates, the fans, and the city itself. That inspiration propelled the Lions into the new year. They faced the Dallas Cowboys in the first ever NFL playoff game to be played under the Big Top. And it was all Lions as they trounced the upstart Cowboys 38-6, sending them to their one and only NFC title game appearance. Emotions were all over the spectrum in that unforgettable season finale in 1997. The Silverdome faithful flashed back to Mike Utley when promising Lion linebacker Reggie Brown lay motionless on the turf after breaking his neck, making this tackle against the Jets. Brown would make a remarkable recovery, but his football career was over. But in that very same game, Barry Sanders would add to his legend, rushing past the 2,000-yard mark. The first back to do the deed since O.J. Simpson in 1973. And hey, the Lions even managed to win 13-10 securing yet another playoff berth. These are memories we'll carry with us long after the Dome is done. Too bad in 2001, the Lions' last season in Pontiac, we've been left with nothing but memories of a season we'd love to forget. Six NFL games, but on New Year's Eve 1975, Elvis performed here before his largest audience ever. Next season, Lions move into 65,000-seat Ford Field in downtown Detroit.
For the Lions today, Ty Detmer makes his fourth start of the season at quarterback. And for the Cowboys, Emmitt Smith, 56 yards away from his 11th consecutive 1,000-yard season, which would set a new NFL record, breaking a tie with Barry Sanders. JB, back to you. Fox Sports welcomes you to Pontiac, Michigan, the final game at the Pontiac Silverdome as the Detroit Lions get set to move downtown next season. Week 17 of the NFL, it's the Lions and the Dallas Cowboys. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the NFL on Fox. Kenny Albert along with Tim Green. And Tim, the Cowboys have played very well over the last month. Last week, they beat the playoff-bound 49ers, and many of the Cowboys players and coaches felt that game was their Super Bowl. Yeah, that, Kenny, I think you need a motivation coming into a game like today. And for the Cowboys, they really want to maintain the momentum that they've built here late in the season. And Coach Dave Campbell said, you know, if last week was our emotional win and it was our Super Bowl, then today's game is the first game of next season. And the Cowboys are thinking about the Bears and the 49ers and the Pittsburgh Steelers, who last year had losing records, but they ended on an upswing. And that's what the Cowboys really want to do today. And the Cowboys led offensively by the combination of rookie quarterback Quincy Carter and veteran Emmitt Smith. Oh, and Emmitt Smith is running with the same toughness and aloof elusiveness over the last couple of weeks that we saw from him when he was 25 years old in the prime of his life. He is really exciting and playing well. And Quincy Carter had a coming out party last week that was sensational. And everyone that knows Quincy Carter couldn't be happier. What a nice, nice guy. But he finally did all the things that Cowboys owner Jerry Jones said he would do. He ran the ball extremely well. He threw the ball well. And he ran while he was throwing. And he yeah. threw while he was running. And here in Detroit, Tim, not many positives for the Lions during this 1-14 season. But one strength has been their defensive line. Well, it really has. And you have to look to that. And boy, Robert Porsche has had another Pro Bowl season. This is his third. So he's going to be tough today. And then I really like this rookie. Sean Rogers has had a spectacular season. He leads all NFL defensive linemen in tackles, but he's going to have a tough job today because he's facing Larry Allen. You talk about Emmett Smith and Quincy Carter. Larry Allen is right back to his form as well. Well, it's the season finale for both clubs. The final game at the Silver Dome. The Lions and the Cowboys next on Fox. Watching the NFL on Fox. Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Welcome back to the Silver Dome as we get ready for the opening kickoff. First meeting since 1994 between the Detroit Lions and the Dallas Cowboys. Let's check in with the third member of our broadcast team today, Jennifer Hammond. All right, thanks, Kenny. Head coach Dave Campbell of the Cowboys didn't come down for pregame warm-ups. He was in the locker room. They say he's under the weather. He is nursing the flu and will be feeling the effects of it today, guys. All right, thanks, Jennifer and Tim. Dave also set to undergo hip replacement surgery this coming Tuesday. Right, he said that would give him a great opportunity to assess the NFL's free agents because the Cowboys are going to have 20 million dollars of cap money clear up next season and they're, they're going to go out and spend it. They want to try to find either in the draft or in free agency. They want to find a shutdown cornerback. They want to find a big time pass rusher. And those are things that Dave Campo is going to be assessing while he's laid up with that bad hip. We said the uh, beta machine has already been hooked up in his house. So he can evaluate tapes from this past season, evaluate free agents from around the National Football League. Cowboys have won three of their last five games. Huge win at home last Sunday over the San Francisco 49ers 27-21, while the Lions lost to the Bears 24-0. The Cowboys have won the toss. Jason Hansen getting set to kick off for the Detroit Lions. Reggie Swinton back deep to receive for the Cowboys. 
It's been a long year for Reggie. Started in the XFL with Las Vegas, and he's had a fine year returning punts and kicks for the Cowboys. Sweeten from the nine-yard line. Out across the 30. Cutting to the outside. And is forced out of bounds at the 44-yard line by Marty Carter after a 35-yard return. Quincy Carter, the reigning NFC Offensive Player of the Week, leads the Cowboys offense onto the field for the first time. And then protecting Carter, Dorsey, at right tackle, making his second consecutive start for the injured Solomon Page. Ismael and Galloway, the wide receivers. Emmett Smith with Troy Hambrick in the backfield. And the tight end is Jackie Harris. First and ten for the Cowboys from their own 44-yard line. Off the play fake to Smith. Carter with time, complete to the tight end Harris into Lions territory. A gain of seven. Setting up second and three. Lions with the 26th ranked defense, a strong front four, as Tim talked about in the open. Robert Porsche heading to his third Pro Bowl. Brian Williams, the longtime Packer, makes the start at right linebacker for the injured Barrett Green. And Marty Carter starts at strong safety for the injured Lamar Campbell. Second down and three from the Lions, 49-yard line. First carry of the day for Emmett Smith. And Marty Carter coming up to make the stop after a gain of just one. Yeah, Marty Carter replacing Lamar Campbell, who's hurt and out for the season. Carter started this season with the Atlanta Falcons as their strong safety. But Carter is a good run stopper. The problem he has is sometimes he's over aggressive, and they use that to bait him and then throw a play action pass in behind him. He started five games for the Falcons this season before he was let go. And signed by the Lions. Three wide receivers set, third down and two. Carter's pass incomplete, intended for Joe Galloway, Judy Iwuma on the coverage. One thing I saw last week from the Cowboys was you know, Joey Galloway and Rocket Ismail, I think, developed and solidified a confidence in quarterback Quincy Carter. And I think because they became more confident in him, they started to make more catches. This is one you really kind of expect Joey Galloway to catch. You know, he needs to go out and attack that football. He just kind of put his hands up there kind of, uh, uh, you know, halfway. He needs to play aggressively if Quincy Carter is going to have a game like he did last week. Mike Endor punting from his own 40-yard line. And over end, and a fair catch called for by Pro Bowl alternate Desmond Howard at the 15-yard line. So the Lions go on offense for the first time. Ty Detmer makes his fourth start of the season for the injured Mike McMahon. Up front, Backus, Seppel, Beverly, Stey, and Joyce. Johnny Morton, Desmond Howard, the wideout, Stewart and Schlesinger in the backfield at the tight end, David Sloan. Kenny, I think the key for Detroit, and if they're going to win this game, they're going to need James Stewart to stay in the game and play well. And he, when he has stayed in the game, he's played incredibly well. Look at the difference he's made in the Lions offense. A six-yard pickup on first down. Stewart missed last week's game, Tim, with the sprained right ankle. Also missed four other games earlier this season. Cowboys defense ranked third in the NFL. Zelder, Noble, Myers, and Ellis up front. Marcus Steele, a rookie out of USC. Edwards and Hawthorne on the corners. Keegan Woodson, the Cowboys safeties. There's that brace on James Stewart's ankle. That's the thing that's kept him out of games. Denver on second and three. Had the pass batted down. Michael Myers got a piece of it. Now Michael Myers has been a very active defensive lineman all season for the Cowboys. Now, he's not your prototypical big body that you get in there, you know, like the Bears guys. Here he is. Watch him here. And he gets himself right over here and upfield and in front of Ty Detmer. That's a great athletic play by Mike Myers. As I started to say, he's not like those Chicago, those big behemoths in there. So you take him out in some situations as he is now, but he's, he's been very active. 
Three wide receivers, third and three. Denver over the middle, has the first down through the bottom one. Out to the 32-yard line, Dexter Copley made the tackle after a gain of nine. Well, this is what the Detroit Lions want to do, because think about how they got to this third and short, Kenny. They got it because of a great first down run by James Stewart. And now all Ty Detmer has to do, just drop back, and look, at nice easy throw. He reads the defense, he finds the open man, and it's a first down. And if Ty Detmer has the luxury of a successful run game, he can run Marty Morningwake's West Coast offense with great efficiency. I, I think Detmer got a real bad rap when he threw seven interceptions in the Cleveland game. I think he pressed in that game because they got behind and they had to go to the air. And, and uh, I think he's a much better quarterback than his 10 interceptions and one touchdown would suggest. And he knows the system so well after spending time in Green Bay, Philadelphia, San Francisco. James Stewart out across the 35-yard line. A gain of four on the play. Greg Ellis brought him down. So the thing with Ty Detmer is there's Darren Woodson. He, he came off the field for a play. Now he's coming back on, and that's that's critical for the Cowboys' defense. I mean, he has been the mainstay there for years and years. And now Brendan like Stye is shaken up. Yeah. The Lions' right guard. Early first quarter from the Silver Dome. As the Lions' training staff tends to Stye, no score. We'll be back. Fox NFL Sunday brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 36. Kenny Albert, Tim Green, Jennifer Hammond back in Pontiac. Stalker McDougal replaces Brennan Stein. Matt Joyce, number 75, moves over to right guard. McDougal in at right tackle. Second down and six for the Lions. And Stewart is followed up hey, by so Pepe Zelda. Cowboys came with a run blitz on that play. And what they like to sneak Darren Woodson right up to the line of scrimmage. They build themselves an eight-man front. Everyone hits a gap. And that's why they're, they're very tough to run on when they do that. Now, earlier in the season, Darren Woodson spent a lot of his time and mental energy thinking about the cornerbacks and trying to protect Dwan Hawthorne and Mario Edwards. But as those guys have kind of emerged and matured, Darren Woodson has been able to get more and more involved in the run as he is right there. Denver on third and six. Goes behind the intended receiver, Johnny Morton. So the Lions will punt it away. And the crowd you know, booing on this one, but the crowd probably didn't see the linebacker and the drop that he took. Because with a quarterback, you have other things that you have to consider. Now, watch, watch that win. Now, Wynn is going to drop right into this zone here. So if Detmer throws it there on the mark, he takes a chance of having an interception with the linebacker underneath. So sometimes you have to make a throw that doesn't look as good as you'd like, but it gives you the best chance to succeed. Picks up the punt from former Cowboy John Jett at the 18-yard line. Only a one-yard return, 47-yard punt by Jett. The Pontiac Silverdome has hosted two Lions playoff games. January of 92, Detroit never trailed in a 38-6 whooping of the Cowboys. They advanced to the NFC Championship game. And then two years later, the NFC Wild Card game. Brett Favre hitting Sterling Sharp with under a minute to play. Packers win it 28-24. Here's the final home game for the Lions in Pontiac. Penalty markers on first down. One thing, I don't think any of the Lions players or, or anybody in the team is going to miss the Silver Bowl. start offense, number 79. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Jerron Dorsey, the rookie with the offsides, but the there was a lot of animosity between the Silver Dome and the Lions this year. The Silver Dome didn't allow the Lions in to practice at times, and they forced them to go in the bubble, which was undersized, and didn't let them get the work done they wanted to. So no one, I don't think, in the Lions organization is uh, is going to be sad to, to move on. 
Lions moving downtown next season. Evan Smith out across the 25. Across the 40 to the 42. 23-yard pickup. Sean Rogers finally brought down Emmett. I said right at the beginning of this game that Emmett Smith looks like he looked when he was 25 years old with the toughness and the elusiveness of a younger player. Look at him here. I mean, he runs through tackles, and you see him working the edge of the field and picks up an extra six yards after one of the big guys finally knocks him down. E Emmett Smith is, is playing so well that it, it's remarkable at his age and how many hits he's taken that he continues to do what he does. And now the pass to the outside, complete to Rocket Ismail, close to another Cowboys first down as we check in with James Brown. Hey, Kenny and Tim, you know the Packers still have a shot at the NFC Central title. Take a look at Brett Favre, opening drive, four plays, 62 yards, 26 there to Bill Schrader, 7-0 pack. Tony Banks, you know, he's being evaluated by Marty Schottenheimer. Is he coming back next year? He throws a pick here. It doesn't help his call. Adrian Wilson returns at 60 yards, 7-0. Cards over the skins. Back to Kenny and Tim. Thanks, JB. Hey, tell Howie he's absolutely right. With Farm and the quarterback, the Packers could do anything. And here's Carter going deep, looking for Galloway. He stepped, let's see, did he step out of bounds at the three? He's saying no catch. He did not get both feet in. So the Cowboys will take it back. Here's Galloway. Yep, yep, out of bounds. Out of bounds before he even makes the catch. Well-thrown football by Quincy Carter, and that's what he did last week that impressed so many people. I think people saw that Quincy Carter had good arm strength and good running ability. The thing that was so impressive last week was the very accurate deep balls that he threw. More penalty flags on third and one. Full start offense, number 61. Five yard penalty, still third down. Second Cowboys penalty of the drive. That's Kelvin Garman, the right guard. Well, JB told us about Tony Banks picked off moments ago. Remember, he was the Cowboys' first quarterback this season right. back in training camp. Right, and, you know, Tony Banks got almost all the reps in the offseason with the first team through training camp. And so that put Quincy Carter, who is a rookie anyway, behind in his learning. And he has caught up fast this season, especially considering he's missed six games with a hamstring injury. Carter dumps it off. Incomplete. Michael Wiley, the intended receiver, out of the backfield. And that's a play there where I think Quincy Carter just needed to take matters into his own hands. Huh? Michael Wiley has done a nice job running the football this year. But Wiley's only a little bit removed from Quincy Carter. And when this seam opens up, I think Quincy Carter needs to just go ahead and take that seam because his running abilities are really what make him special and what, what, make, what separate him from a lot of other young quarterbacks in the National Football League. He set a Cowboys record for a quarterback last week by rushing 10 times in the win over San Francisco. Doors punt taken out the 13 by Howard. Steps out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Six-yard return, 42-yard punt by Noor. Back in Pontiac, Brendan Stey back in the game for the Lions at right guard. Stocker McDougal remains in at right tackle, so Matt Joyce comes out. Well, talking with Marty Morningwig, and, and I've even read this about Matt Mill, they need their big players to emerge and stop him at Google is a first I'm round right over here, man. he played right guard and the right tackle in college they need him to become a great player they want to see him here during the offseason training hard pass complete to Avion Kaysom out of the backfield up at the 27 yard line a gain of nine as we check in with JV Kenny and Tim take a look at what's happening again Green Bay showing its weapons this time look at this little second play here Amon Green takes it 25 yards to pay dirt 14 nothing you know a Packers win and Bears loss and the Packers win the Central look at Garcia 56 yard pass play to Sarah Owens 
career high 15 touchdowns for Owens. 7 0 there. Hey, Tim, Terry's a little upset you didn't pat him on the back. Back to you guys. <laughs> well, after Terry didn't give anybody in our game a Terry award, I, my feelings were a little hurt. And Decker to Johnny Morton for the first down. Still three and a half quarters left to go. Well, next week. The NFL's second season kicks off as the playoffs begin with an NFC wild card game on Fox. Next Sunday, coverage begins with the pregame show at 11.30 Eastern right here on Fox. And, of course, Tampa Bay will have to go back to Philly. And then the other game is going to be the 49ers going to either Green Bay or Chicago. Whichever, however that turns out today, if Chicago loses and Green Bay wins, then the 49ers would have to travel to Chicago. Denver's pass deflected and then caught by Johnny Morton, but no gain on the play as he was tackled by Dexter Coakley. Johnny Morton has had a good season. You know, you think about how bad the Lions season has been, and they're 1-14, and, and but Johnny Morton has been probably the only constant on this offense that's that's continued to deliver continued to make catches he's got a nice average over 15 yards a catch he was the only guy that the Cowboys defenders were really worried about six different wide receivers have started opposite Morton this year Corey Schlesinger is hit for a loss of two yards Pepe Zelda the first Cowboy in on the tackle you know James Stewart is conspicuously absent from the Lions lineup right now and, and as I said I think if the Lions are going to win this game they need James Stewart in the game they need to get him running and I just don't know what he's capable of with that injured ankle and without him it's going to put a tremendous amount of pressure on Ty Depp. There is James Stewart on the sidelines without his helmet on. Now third down and 12 Lions with three wide receivers. More penalty flags. That's going to be on Greg Ellis. Larry Nevers, our referee this afternoon. That will be an encroachment penalty because he encroached. Defense, number 90, encroachment. Five-yard penalty, still third down. We called it on Fritch, but Ellis was the first guy to encroach. So two Cowboys encroached, but Frisch was on the end. There's Ellis right there. He saw he encroached on Brendan Sky's shoulder pad. And that is already the third Cowboys penalty today. Lions are the second most penalized team in the league. So the Lions gained five yards on the penalty. Now third down and seven. They must cross the 47-yard line for a first down. Lamont Wall into Cowboys territory to the Dallas 48. Gain of 11 yards on the play and a Lions first down. These are the kinds of capabilities that, that Ty Detmer has because the Cowboys come with a blitz. Watch it right here. Here's Woodson and here's Stat Win. They come on the blitz. And Win actually comes unimpeded to Ty Detmer. Detmer has the ability to make the quick read, make a quick dump off pass, find the open guy. Detmer can be good but it's going to be hard for him to take a game over and win it by himself because he doesn't have a great deep ball. Now four wide receivers. Everybody out. Denver under pressure. He took a hit from Michael Myers. Pass intended for Lamont Warren. That just kind of adds to that. And that was a good hit, too, by Michael Myers. Adds to Ty Detmer's already bruised body because here's what watch Myers well, Myers comes right here loops around watch him here and this is a good wall and then right into the turf and Denver said he was sore more sore after last week's game than he's ever been in his life and he was he was really just pounded relentless now second and ten from the Cowboys 49 India Kaysan Takes the handoff and gains one. Down to the 48-yard line. So with James Stewart out, Lions going with Warren and now Kaysan. We saw Schlesinger a moment ago. Well, this is a tryout for Avion Kaysan. And, of course, we were here a couple weeks ago when the first time he went into the football game against the Vikings, he fumbled the ball. 
And that's why he was he was with the Rams in camp. They let him go because he continued to put the ball on the ground. And so this is a tryout for him. And he needs to make something special happen if he's going to be on the roster today. The tools that he has are speed. So he needs to use the speed and turn it into positive plays. Decker on 49 to Schlesinger. Puts a nice move on Darren Wilson and picks up the first down. A gain of 13 yards from Detmer to Schlesinger. And this is what Corey Schlesinger has done. All You know, I, I said Johnny Morton, I was remiss in, say, in, in not saying Schlesinger in the same breath as far as a guy who has been played consistently. And Schlesinger has done it all. And you're going to see on this play here, I mean, he, he puts a move on Darren Woodson. And not many people put a move on Darren Woodson and get away with it. Watch it right here. So he puts a move on Woodson, and he jukes him and gets through. And then he puts his shoulder pads onto Izell Reese and punishes him. So you see the different facets of Corey Schlesinger. Reese shake it up. Corey thought he was Barry Sanders. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Beechwood Aged Budweiser with a crisp, clean, and refreshing taste known only to the king of beers. By Visa, it's everywhere NFL fans want to be. By Autotrader.com, the biggest, best used car site on the planet. And by Siemens, Siemens Global Network of Innovation. No score back at the Silverdome. And look at Corey Schlesinger with receptions by fullbacks. He he leads all the true fullbacks because, you know, Larry Centers really is more of a receiving player. But Schlesinger and Christian, the next two guys, on those guys are complete backs because they block extremely well and they've run very well this year as well. Jeffrey looking for Johnny Morton. But Darren Woodson got a piece of it. And, and that's that's excellent coverage by Darren Woodson. And it's not easy being a defensive back out there. It's not all about pass cover. Sometimes you get these things coming at you. Listen to this. Oh, oh man. You could hear that crack. And that uh, led Izell Reese to being uh, helped off the field. And Schlesinger is just a load. And he comes at you and, and he brings everything he has. James Stewart back in the game for the Lions. On second and ten, Sloan shifting, and with Schlesinger leading the way, this is still up the middle, down to the 33-yard line for a gain of two. Dexter Copley on the tackle. Well, if Stewart's going to be in the game, then the Cowboys' defense—they know that he's going to be in. So here, Woodson goes, and he when he comes back, T comes up. So they're going to play an eight-man front. Almost all the time if James Stewart is in the game because as I said, you know We've talked from the very beginning. This is an important game for the Cowboys to win I don't know how important it is for the Detroit Lions you know, they got that O out of their record when they beat Minnesota I, I, th I think they kind of Were relieved at that but the Cowboys have some momentum that they want to carry into the offseason the next year Cowboys linebacker Marcus Steele shake it up will return to the Silver Dome after these messages. Marcus Steele on the Cowboys sideline, shake it up on the previous play. Lions now facing third down and eight on the Dallas 33-yard line. Lions have been good on third down today. They're three for four. Normally during the season, they've been pretty bad. Uh, two for two on this drive. Now two for three as Detmer's pass was dropped by Lamont Warren. We said it to Los Angeles one more time, and James Brown. Tell you what's happening as the Giants are battling back. Bradshaw says Jim Fossil's concern was whether or not the Giants would be mentally ready. Looks like it here. Great catch by Ike Hilly. That was good. 14-7 to score there. Guess what? Garcia and Owens again. How far? Try 60 yards. 16 TDs now for Owens. 14-0. Hey, Tim, Terry says he would have given you the author and sports writer award, but because of his book, a bestseller, he had to give it to himself. <laughs> now, why doesn't that surprise me? Terry awarded himself and overlooked me again. Well, there's always next year, JP. Tim Jason Hansen has hit his last six field goal attempts from between 50 and 59. This is a 51-yard attempt. And it hooks to the left. So Hansen no good from 51. 
Well, this, of course, the final game here at the Silver Dome, which opened in 1975. Its original name, Pontiac Metropolitan Stadium. And the first preseason game, the roof was not even completed. They played the game. And Ford Field will seat 65,000, a beautiful new dome stadium in downtown Detroit. Little tail of the tape here, Kenny. You see when they were built and the capacity, 80,000. It's going to go down to 65,000. That should ensure sellouts here almost every weekend. You know, we were talking before the game, Ken, and you aptly pointed out, and, and, it, and it, it's a real testament to the fans here in Detroit that this, despite the fact that the Silverdome has this huge capacity, they've sold out six of their eight home games, despite having a 1 and 14 season. They're number four, Detroit on attendance in the entire National Look Football League. So I, I think you know, my hat is go off to the Detroit Lions fans who've kind of really hung in there. Yeah, they really deserve a lot of credit. Second and seven. And seven again. Tracy Scroggins in on the tackle. In the 27 seasons the Lions have played here at the Silver Dome, they have averaged over 68,000 fans per game. Over 14 million in total attendance. And as I mentioned during the Fox Watch, Elvis Presley performed before his largest audience ever here on New Year's Eve, 1975, over 60,000. In fact, he signed a contract to perform here every other New Year's Eve. But of course, he passed away in 1977. So Elvis was in the house. I wonder if that's where Jerry Glanville got his penchant for leaving tickets for Elvis. He used to be a special teams coach here in Detroit. We're down at four. Carter complete for Jackie Harris. We'll have to check the whereabouts of your former head coach, Jerry Glanville, on New Year's Eve 75. Well, one thing we know the whereabouts of is Quincy Carter. He's back. And on that last pass, you got to see some of the accuracy that this young man has. He drops back, he reads the defense well, he looks left, looks right, sees Jackie Harris. Not much separation between Jackie Harris and the cornerback. So this ball has to be a laser, and it is. Enough for the first down. Cowboys in Lions territory from the 47. Hey! Damn it. Take it down. Nice play by the rookie out of the University of Texas, Sean Rogers. And this is just an example of how this young man has played all season long with, with strength and power and intensity. Watch Sean Rogers right there. I mean, he breaks right through a double team. So he's got Kelvin Garman and Mark Stepnowski on him. Watch him here. Look at him. He hits. He sees the double. He spins out of it and makes a tackle. And that's some really excellent agility for a man that big. I think I think really the sky is the limit for Sean Rogers in this league. Looks at Carter on second and ten. Fires another bullet complete down to the 42 yard line. Jackie Harris once again. Alan Aldridge on the tackle again of five. We're going to have to see if the Cowboys want to keep the momentum going from last week's game. We're going to have to see Quincy Carter start to kind of take this game over and start to make some some big plays, either throwing the ball or running the ball. You see that he certainly has the capability to do that. His first five, his first two starts were abysmal, but his last five, he really has picked it up and developed. First quarter has come to an end. Cowboys on the move. No score, and Pontiac will return after this word from your local Fox station. We got a little music in Motown as we welcome you back. And, Tim, I was impressed with what Quincy Carter said yesterday. He said, hey, I've got work to do. The offseason is more important than the regular season. Well, you get a sense of talking to Quincy Carter that he has a great understanding for what he has to do when the game is being played, as he did right there, when the game is not being played in preparation, in practice. He's going to take that attitude into the offseason. You know, he is, as I just said, he needs to start to make some big plays. And here it is. It's just going to be Ismail. He's going to run a post pattern here. 
and watch how well this ball is thrown. I mean, it's, it's really a perfect pass. The coverage isn't that bad, and you've got to get it in before the free safety can knock your wide receiver, and Carter was right on the mark. 50th reception of the season for the Rocket, a 35-yard game. First and goal from the seven. Evan, going to the outside, looks to turn the corner, but works his way down to the two-yard line. Well, that was a sweet move that Emmett put on Chidi Oloma. Wasn't it? I mean, that was just, that was just sweet. Emmett Smith got out there on the edge, and it looked like he was riding a wave. What? Just watch it. I mean, the moves and the fluidity speak for themselves. <laughs> Emmett has really picked up the pace, Tim, over the last five weeks. It's just beautiful to watch him work. And it again, on second and goal. He is in for the touchdown. The 159th touchdown of Emmett Smith's career. Only Jerry Rice has entered the end zone more often. Now Emmett Smith is only 14 yards shy of breaking his tie with Barry Sanders for 10 consecutive 1,000-yard seasons. This would be 11, 14 yards to go for Emmett Smith. Emmett with 42 yards on the ground today on seven carries. And now John Hilbert out to attempt the point after. Cowboys take the 7 0 lead over the Lions. Early second quarter. Emmett Smith into the end zone. Fox NFL Sunday. Brought to you by Toyota Fon 02. Password value. Get the feeling. By Miller Lite. Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. By Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. And by Siemens. Siemens. Global network of innovation. Back at Pontiac, Cowboys with a 7-0 lead over the Lions. Dave Campo and Emmett Smith had some words a few weeks ago, and I think cleared the air for the better of Emmett and Dave and, and the entire team. And since then, Emmett has been playing, as we said, like he's 25 years old again. And the Cowboys have been winning. They've won three of their last five. Emmett with three 100-yard games during that stretch. Well, early in the season, Emmett Smith was was critical of Quincy Carter and that got out in the newspaper and you know, Dave Campbell said you know Emmett if you just mention something in passing you are such a big personality and such a star that it has a huge impact and I don't want you who've been a total class act and done everything right on the field off the field your whole career at the end of your career to have anyone perceive you as anything but a fantastic person a fantastic leader and Emmett Smith said you know you're right and since then Emmett has been positive he was positive about Quincy Carter last week and that meant a lot to the young player from the 20 yard line the quick slant is caught by David Sloan He's tackled by Dexter quickly after a gain of four. Well, Emmett with his 148th career rushing touchdown just moments ago. And as you mentioned, 10 consecutive 1,000-yard seasons. He's very close to changing that number to 11. Yeah, and, and you see what he's done on the field. He's been a superstar. And as Dave Campo aptly pointed out, he's been a star off the field. You just look at his bio and all the different charitable organizations that he's been involved with. And he, he's, he's you know, always doing things for kids. What a wonderful human being as well as a Hall of Fame player. Off the play, fans. Denver on second and six. Complete again for the tight end, Sloan. Brought down by that win. About three yards shy of the marker. Well, this is a nice play by Dat Wynn. And something that I think the Cowboys linebackers have done well. Dat Wynn and Dexter Coakley in particular. Watch Wynn. He closes on the play here. And he makes the tackle for no gain. So there's nothing. Sloan gets nothing after the catch. And it's because Wynn has a really excellent tackle. He lowers his shoulder, he gets his weight low, and he explodes up through the ball carrier. And Campo very happy with that Wynn's play this year. Denver rolling right on third and two. And he throws across 
the field to Johnny Morton. And Morton picks up the first down out to the 44-yard line, a gain of 15. Well, this is a, this is kind of a Jake the Snake Plumber type of move by Detmer. And watch, he beats the blitz on the corner here. And he's got the speed to do that. When he gets here and he gets the pressure in his face, Demmer does an excellent job of just kind of moving to the side, making Darren Woodson miss, and then dumping this ball to his open receiver. Demmer almost play. stepped out of bounds. Yeah, nice, nice kind of uh, ingenuity by Ty Demmer. From the 44-yard line, Demmer to Stephen Trejo. The backup tight end. His fifth catch of the year, a gain of 20 yards. And again, we're seeing Ty Detmer's capabilities to operate this offense. As long as he doesn't have to push it downfield too much, Detmer drops, it's a little quarter roll. He reads the defense, he sees Trejo, is pretty well open, and he just dumps it off. That's Detmer using what's between the ear holes in his helmet to get another Detroit Lions first down. Detmer's 10 of 15 so far. Six yards. He's putting together a, a solid day. First and ten from the Cowboys, 36. The end around to Johnny Morton. And Morton diving up to the 30-yard line, gain of six on the play. Pat Dennis made the tackle. Well, Ty Denver grew up in Texas, the son of a legendary high school football coach Ty a Dallas Cowboys fan growing up and his brother Coy figures to see plenty of action tonight for the Eagles that's right we got it first while well, second hand but genuine second hand from his brother they're going to treat that game kind of like a preseason game as, as Terry and I we talked about in the pregame show a rest out of the down Denver complete another first down to Johnny Morton at the 20 yard line Mario Edwards brought him down after a gain of 10. And this is the guy, Johnny Morton, and we talked about it, that Darren Woodson and the, the Cowboys defenders were concerned about. You see it here, it's just a nice break, nice in route, and look how, look how well the ball is thrown. Nice timing pattern between Detmer, because he lets that ball go before Morton has even turned around. So it's a nice timing play by those two. That's tough to defend. Fourth catch of the day for Morton, setting up a first down on the Dallas 20. Off the pump fake, another pump fake. Denver under pressure, chased by Zelda, and he throws it out of bounds. Well, Kenny, we talked about Stocker McDougal and the, the big players for the Lions having to really come on and become dominant players. And, McDougal had a nice block on that last play and Marty Morningwig told us that he was going to sit down with not only with Stocker but with his wife and explain to him look this is what we need from you. This is the difference between you playing 15 years in the league and being an all pro because you have those skills or just being out of the league in three or four years. You need to dedicate yourself in the off season to be as strong as you can be, to be in as good shape as you can be, to be a dominant football player in this league. You can no longer do it just based on your God-given skills. You have to train yourself with great enthusiasm. And with the play clock winding down, Detmer calls timeout. Back in Pontiac, Tim, you talked about Stalker McDougal, who was the Lions' first-round pick in 2000. Their first-round pick in 1999 was... Aaron Gibson, who started five games for Detroit this season, but is now a Cowboy. Right, and, and they released him earlier this season, and, and that's kind of the example that I think Morningwig is going to put up for Stocker McDougal. Denver to slow it in the end zone. Touchdown! A penalty marker on the play. Detmer hits the tight end, David Sloan. And now the officials will conference Larry Nemers and his crew. Looks to be against Number the Cowboys. Number 94, the defensive team lined up in the neutral zone. That penalty is declined. Touchdown. Well, that was a nice throw by Demmer, an excellent catch by David Slum. But we talked about Stocker McDougal and what he needs to do. And he gives the throwing lane to Ty Demmer. Watch him here. 
and he just cuts Greg Ellis. So there's no corner. There's a huge throwing lane. Watch Detmer. He throws it right down that lane. See, there's Ellis on the ground, the open lane. And again, an excellent play by Sloan and a throw by Detmer, but it all started with the young tackle, Stalker McDougal. Seventh touchdown catch of the year for Sloan, most by a Lions tight end in nearly 40 years. The holder, Jet, had trouble with the snap. So the Lions That's trail by planning, a point. Kenny. You, you need to have an emergency play in the event of a missed snap. 7-6, Cowboys. Let's go. I guarantee you this is the last time the Lions don't have a fire play. Watch John Jett. He mishandles the snap, and now he goes. He knows what he's got to do. There should be receivers out in the end zone, but there aren't any. There's no play. See, when there's a miss snap, this guy yells fire, and there need, you need to have two people in the back of the end zone for Jett to throw to. See, he's looking for that cut there, and there's no one out there. But I promise you the Detroit Lions won't have a miss snap like that again without a fire play where players are ready to catch the ball and turn a bad play, not hitting a one-point conversion into a good play, picking up two points. Hanson's kicked off, taken out the goal line by Reggie Swinton. Swinton looks to turn of the corner, forced out of bounds just shy of the 20-yard line by Ray McElroy. Well, are you looking for the perfect way to spend your evenings? We introduce the best damn sports show period with host Chris Rose, Tom Arnold, and a bunch of ex-jocks. It's the only show that gives you sports comedy, commentary, scores, and highlights. So kick back, relax, enjoy the best damn sports show period, now available weeknights only on Fox Sports Net. And talk about a fire play. I mean, you never know what's going to happen on the best damn sports show. You know, that's, that's like a fire play in and of itself. Everybody just starts running around screaming fire. And worse. Yeah, there's some, there's some unusual things on that show. Nice play by Calvin Pritchett. Breaking through to tackle Evan Smith as we check in with James Brown. Hey, Kenny, if the Saints are mailing it in, San Francisco is embarrassing them. Garcia faking left, going back right to the fullback, Terry Jackson. It is now 21-0 San Francisco over Nolens. Back to Kenny and Tim. Well, the Saints allowed 40 points to the Redskins last week. They trailed 21 nothing. 49ers heading to the playoffs. First time since 98. They are back in it. And again, the Niners last year had a losing season, a losing record, but they had a surge late. That's what the Cowboys want to do. They want a surge late. Troy Hendrick could not hold on. 49ers, Tim, last year. Won four of their last six games. Dave Campo pointed to that. If the Cowboys win today, they'll win four of their last six for the first time in five years. Now they've had some sloppy play today, though, Kenny, by some of their players. They've had three penalties. We've seen a couple drop passes. Guys not focused in, and, and they need to, they need to pick it up. I mean, they do not want to lose to Detroit. Who, with their one and 14 record and all the injuries that Detroit is that you see Luther Ellis's injured elbow I mean, he's one of the injuries that stayed on the field they've had more probably than any team that have removed players from the field third down at nine Potter with time and the pass is caught by Joey Galloway at the 33 yard line for a Cowboys First down, a gain of 13 yards. And again, you're going to see the excellent passing by Quincy Carter because Galloway doesn't get tremendous separation. He just gets enough. It's just enough, and that ball is thrown perfectly. It's thrown a little low, a little outside, where Galloway can catch it, but the defender can't catch it. And we saw Galloway drop a couple passes like that earlier in the day, so I think he's back on track with Joey with Quincy Carter. First and 10 from the 33. Carter over the middle. Ismael took a big hit from Jimmy Wyrick. Getting back to Joey Galloway, Tim. Dave Campo told us last night Galloway struggled with the quarterback situation early in the season. And Campo used Rocket Ismael as an example, and Galloway's picked up yeah, the pace. Example, because Ismael was blocking, he was giving great effort, but on this play, you're going to see, I think you're going to agree with me, Kenny, this is one that Ismael, he's got to catch this ball. Watch it. Watch where it's thrown. Right in his hands. Yep. He's got to catch it. Now 
second and ten for the Cowboys. Stepping out of bounds at the 35-yard line was Emmett. One-yard pickup on the play, so Emmett now with 43 yards on the ground, 13 shy of 1,000. You know, earlier in the season, when the Cowboys were in third and long, I think people probably started to grit their teeth and say, oh, no, what's going to happen? You know what? Because I'm standing here right now, and the Cowboys are in third and long, and I'm excited. But I want to see what Quincy Carter's going to do. Because he's done so well lately, he's done good things on known passing come situations. Out, out, right? And I want to see, is he going to drop back in the pocket and throw? Is he going to scramble? First, he's going to take a timeout, so the anticipation is going to continue to build. That's Detroit, the Lions catch up. Lions defense called timeout as they look to set up on the third down and eight. Just under seven minutes to go, second quarter, Cowboys by one. Back in Pontiac, Lions called the timeout because they only had nine defensive players on the field. Now they get the right personnel in the game to face this third and eight from the 35-yard line. Please put 6.51 on the game clock. 6.51. Thank you. Thank you, Kenny. And thanks to Fox Box operator Josh Weingrath for putting the 14 the seconds clock. back on the Fox Box. Josh was quick. It's Josh. From Larry, from Larry Numbers' mouth to Josh's fingers. And now another adjustment to 6.53. Hey, this Detroit crowd is going to make it tough for Quincy Carter to make adjustments. Carter out of the shotgun, third and eight. Good protection. Carter looking for Galloway. And it was broken up beautifully along the sidelines by Ray McElroy. This is really outstanding play by McElroy. Now they're in a two deep safety, so McElroy is over the top here of Joey Galloway. And watch him play it. He plays it to perfection. He runs over. Look at that. He breaks it up just at the last second. That's just good defense. Ball was well thrown. Pattern was well thrown, but McElroy makes a play. Mike Adore back at his own 20-yard line. Desmond Howard back deep for the Lions. Good kick by Gore, forcing Howard back to the 19. Steps out of bounds at the 27-yard line after an 8-yard return, a 47-yard punt by Gore. We take you back to January of 1982, the first ever Super Bowl in a northern city, the 49ers and the Bengals. Who's that guy, Jack? Yeah, Chris Collinsworth, there he is. And you see how close the Bengals came to winning this game? Look at this, in the last play, that was the difference, a 49er goal line stand. Otherwise, Collinsworth would have the ring and he wouldn't have to listen to so much grief from Howie Long and Terry Bradshaw every weekend on the pregame show because he would have had a Super Bowl championship. So the 49ers won it, Super Bowl 16, 26-21. Here in Pontiac. Demo over the top to Kaysan. Out to the 35-yard line for a game of eight. Kaysan is one of those players that the Lions wanted to get a look at today. You know, Marty Morningwig wants to win this game, but he also wants to take a look. He wanted Stocker McDougal to get in there and see what he could do. And we've seen him play well. James Stewart's on the side. He's got the injured ankle anyway. They know what he can do. But I still say that uh, if they want to have their best chance to win, they need to get Stewart going a little more than they have. Second down and two, the inside handoff, and Schlesinger picks up the first down, a gain of four after the 39. Well, we talked about Corey Schlesinger being a complete player, and all season long, he's done everything you could do as a fullback. He's run the ball with power and strength, He's been a receiver. 
and made excellent catches and then takes off afterwards. And then watch him block on this play. Look, watch him just hammer this guy. Wall, I mean, right to the turf, baby. Schlesinger doing it all, all season long for the Detroit Lions. On first down, Decker incomplete. Bounced off the chest of Johnny Morton. And just when we started to praise Johnny Morton for his consistency, he gets a really nicely thrown seam ball to him by Ty Detmer. Watch Detmer, he just kind of lofts this one, lays it right in there perfectly. Morton doesn't catch it with his hands. You have to catch a football with your hands. You can't catch it in the crook of your arm. He knows that. Now second and ten with the Lions trailing by a point. Sloan shifting. Kaysan looks to cut outside, but Arantes Grant, the first Cowboy, in on the stop, and then finished off by Dat Wynn. Well, we haven't seen too much from Kaysan today. Have we, Kenny? Not much. Well, he's got some speed, and not seen him turn that speed into uh, into a lot of positive yardage, especially on the ground today. You mentioned that fumble against the Vikings. It was returned for a touchdown. Lions went out to win that game. Their first and only victory. Free, Free play. play. For Uses it well. Yep, Johnny Boyd makes the catch at midfield for a Lions first down. One thing you have to credit Ty Detmer for is is his accuracy. We've talked about he's, he's not a deep ball thrower, but this isn't a deep ball offense. This is not a vertical passing game. This is a horizontal passing game. Offside, defense number 94. Penalty is declined. First down. This is a horizontal passing game, and so so Ty Detmer throws the ball with with really nice accuracy when it's the shorter routes or when it's down in the center of the field. And watch this here, Morton breaks to the center of the field and the ball is thrown with, with really nice accuracy. And we saw Morton drop the pass earlier that was accurate. Again, towards, more towards the center of the field. From midfield, the handoff to Stewart. Tripped up. Knocked out of bounds at the 46 yard line by that win after a gain of four. Getting back to Ty Detmer, Tim, he has meant so much for the development of Mike McMahon, the rookie fifth-round draft pick who made three starts before injuring his foot. And you think back to Detmer's days, backing up Brett Favre and Steve Young and Tim Couch and Marty Morningweg wants him back next yeah, year. Yeah, well, everywhere he's gone, good things have happened for the guys that he's backed up. And Mike McMahon certainly is full of talent. He has excellent speed. He's got that innate ability to make big plays. And he's got a real strong arm. Stewart makes the catch for a gain of two. I think Stewart is hurting. He's he's just getting up slow and, 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 he's, and he's hobbling as he walks. So I, I, I don't know how long he's going to stay in this football game. I see him coming out now. And that doesn't surprise me. But I think that bodes ill for the Detroit Lions. Lamont Warren now in the game on third down. Three wide receivers, Bert Emanuel, Jordan Johnny Morton, and Scotty Anderson. Third and five from the 44. Detmer looking for Morton, nearly made an acrobatic catch. Boy, Michael Myers, he, he has a heck of a pass rush on this play. I mean, this is, he does a beautiful job. Watch him come right through, and Lamont Warren tries to pick him up and just wham, and he just tosses Lamont Warren aside like he's one of those rubber chickens. Michael Myers in his fourth season out of Alabama. Had a nice year. Good hang time. Swinton lets it go. And it's down inside the one-yard line by Jimmy Wyrick. 43-yard punt. Terrific special teams play by Wyrick. Heading the Cowboys deep in their own territory. Well, Fox tonight, don't miss new episodes of Futurama, King of the Hill, The Simpsons, Malcolm, 
and the X-Files. It's all new and it all starts at 7, 6 Central tonight. And I think that Mulder may be coming back. In really? The That's what I think. Inside scoop? Uh, you know, hey, I work for Fox. You know, I know Terry Bradshaw runs the network, but I, I am a Fox employee, and I got an idea that Mulder is going to be back, and I'm excited. I mean, I, I like the show without him, but I like it even better with Mulder. I thought J.P. runs the network. You know, J.P.'s, I think he's Terry's agent, so he's got something to do with it. Louis nice Barrellis, nice play to tackle Evan Smith. And they, they ran that ball right at Robert Porsche, and, and I think if you want to get out of the end zone, you don't want to go towards Porsche. Watch Porsche, 91, watch him work. He works right up here in Sharon Dorsey. And he's the guy that really slows the play down, and then Ellis comes in and makes the tackle. And he wanted a safety there. It was close. And there's Robert Porsche going to his third Pro Bowl. All-time sack leader here in Detroit. You know, that's such an impressive feat to be named by other coaches and other players and fans to go to the Pro Bowl when you're on a 1-14 and 14 team. And that's, that, that tells you that you, you not only had a, 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 a spe, you know, a good season, you had a real special season. And then right across from him, not right across from him, but on the Cowboys offensive line is Larry Allen. And we talked about Quincy Carter's emergence and, and Emmett Smith and how in the last five weeks they really played well. Boy, Larry Allen last week played as well as I've ever seen an offensive lineman play. I mean, he, he tossed Dana Stubblefield, who's a, who's a big, strong man. He tossed him around like a rubber chicken. Of course, Larry Allen has got to be the strongest man in the National Football League. I'll try, I got something I'll try to show you later on where he actually bench presses 700 pounds. Wow. Carter out of the end zone. On second and ten, incomplete, Troy Hambrick, the intended receiver. Well, that's the second throw to Hambrick that he has not brought down. Hambrick more of a running back than he is a fullback. I think that's affected the Cowboys running game this season. You know, to lost not Robert have, Thomas. Yeah, not, when they lost Robert Thomas, not to have a Thomas or a Daryl Johnson type of a fullback to lead block. Hambrick's done as well as he can, but he's a runner. Now this is where the crowd really has an, a great effect because you've got the dome and you've got the noise and the team is backed right up in the corner there. And I bet you Luther Ellis is going to get this crowd jacked up. Call hey, called timeout. Ellis, Tim, calls Porsche the designated hype man yeah, here he, in Detroit. He is. You know, I told you I had something for you. Watch this. Watch how talk about having some network clout. I mentioned Larry Allen and the 700-pound bench press. Here it is. In case you didn't believe me, take a look at this. Look at that. Wait. Watch. The bar's going to bend like a pretzel when he picks it up, like a wet pretzel. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, that's almost, I mean, that's almost unbelievable. I mean, you can see how excited his teammates are. How'd you like to have to face Larry Allen? He says his goal is 800. I'll tell you, that's one of the reasons why I got out of the National Football League. I used to have to get across from guys like that. And I said, you know, these guys are getting too big and too strong. A lot safer up here in the booth. Potter looking for Darren Severini. Well, the Cowboys will be forced to punt from deep in their end zone. Hey, I like Vince Tobin, the coordinator for the Lions, has taken a lot of heat this season. I really like the defensive play he calls here. Watch the Lions come with this blitz, and watch how effective the blitz is. There's pressure on in Quincy Carter's face immediately. Watch it right here. See Todd Light? He comes absolutely untouched and forces this pass really. That, that's one for Vince Tobin. Tobin, the former head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. Micah Noor from deep in the end zone. Here comes the rush. Noor gets the puddle away. Desmond Howard at the Cowboys, 44. 
Five-yard return down to the 39, 43-yard punt. Randall Williams made the tackle for the Lions with just over two minutes remaining in the first half with terrific field position after the hold by their defense. Kenny, interesting on the pregame show to hear them talk about Steve Spurrier and how Daniel Snyder, the owner of the Washington Redskins, has spent the last 36 hours wooing Spurrier. And I agree with Terry Bradshaw. I, I think that Marty Schottenheimer, with a $10 million payout, is going to say thank you and just head right for the bank. And how much money has Snyder squandered? Unbelievable. And Marty's done a terrific job after the 0-5 start. And still ramps his way down to the 32 as we hit the two-minute warning. Redskins have won seven of their last ten games. Not bad, Tim. Fans looking forward to the move downtown. I think it's going to be exciting. Great new facility. A lot of... Uh, Luxury suite, but how about the turf? Marty Morningwing showed us the uh, the artificial surface. That's it, it's more real than the real thing. I was really impressed with the artificial grass and artificial dirt. Detmer still looking on second and three. Now heads for the marker and looks to have the first down. Coming up, uh, the news of halftime report. JB, Terry, Howie, and Chris will have scores and highlights. From around the National Football League and the Fox Sports ticker will keep you updated with up to the second stats. That's all coming up on the Visa Halftime Report. That was a nice little uh, play by Ty Depper. He saw nothing downfield. He gave a little fake pump at the pass and picked up the first down. The Lions, after pinning Dallas down deep in their own territory, are now on the move. They drive going together. Started off by James Stewart run. Penalty markers on first down. Delay a game. Offense, five yard penalty. Still first down. It's the Lions first penalty today. Kenny, you talked about Visa halftime. These are some of the things that we're gonna hear those guys talking about. The things that are still up for grabs. In the AFC, you've got two wild card spots. Two of these three teams are going to go, and you've got the Eastern Division title still up for grabs, and a first-round bye. All these teams looking for that. And then in the NFC, it really comes down to who is going to play where and who gets us a weekend off. Denver on first and 15. The pass was just behind the intended receiver, Burt Emanuel. I think, and, and I, I agree again, I, I hate to keep saying I agree with Terry Bradshaw because it sounds like, you know, you know what it sounds like, right? Not too more. I don't <laughs> But, you know, I like that. But, uh, as he said, if the Rams get home field advantage, if they beat the Falcons today, get home field advantage, I just don't see how anyone's going to go to St. Louis and beat that team. It is the greatest show on turf. And then they go down to the Super Bowl and get to play again. Nearly picked off following the deflection. Pepe Zelder thought he had a chance. A good pressure here by the Cowboys defense and a good response to some bad field position. You're going to see Darren Woodson right here. And he's the guy who comes through Lamont Warren. And he's the guy who tips this ball and makes a big play. Woodson has played really well, and he, he played extremely well last week in the Cowboys' victory over the 49ers. He was all over the field, as we've seen him today. Now third down at 15. That was pass incomplete, deflected away from Lamont Warren. Woodson pounded Lamont Warren after the, he got his hands on that pass. He took a he took a beat. The receivers on both sides have had trouble today holding on to the football. And that's just concentration, Kenny. That's focus and concentration and, and determination. And it's, it's, it's not what you wouldn't expect, or it is what you'd expect in a game like this between two teams that have had losing seasons. 
Jim, another 51-yard attempt. Hanson wide left from 51 earlier. This one is oh, just short. Off the crossbar. I've never seen that before. I've never seen it bounce off the horizontal crossbar. I've seen it bounce off the vertical bars, but never off the horizontal bars. And that kind of epitomizes the Detroit Lions season this year, doesn't it? Just a little bit short. And the ball bounces the wrong way. Wouldn't you say that sums wow. it up? So Jason Hansen, who has had his ups and downs this year, missed three field goals in a game against Chicago. Coming into the game today, had hit six in a row between 50 and 59. He's missed from 51 twice in the first half. And Lions also could not get the extra point following their touchdown due to the bad snap. Ball was pass. Incomplete. Galloway was out of bounds. Penalty marker. Back at the 35-yard line, it's against the Cowboys. Holding, 79, 10-yard penalty. Repeat, first down. Wow, that's Sharon Dorsey's second penalty today. He committed... Three penalties last week in his first start, two the week before after replacing Solomon Page. So seven penalties the last two and a half games committed by Dorsey. Yeah, he needs to really pick it up and have himself a, a, a big day from here on in without any mental mistakes. And if you want to be figured into the plan, it's a great opportunity for a young player to get a chance to play in some games late in the season, but you really have to make the most of it. Carter takes off on first down and slides to the 35-yard line. Get a four on the play. Time winding down in the second quarter. Cowboys are leading the Lions 7-6. Emmett Smith, two-yard touchdown run for Dallas early in the second quarter. And then Ty Detmer. Connecting with David Sloan on a 20-yard pass play for the Lions. Dave Campo not happy with that last quarterback draw. That thing didn't open up at all. I think Carter was looking for a gap in the middle. Now he takes off again. Ooh, wow. What a hit Sean by Sean Rogers. Rogers. <laughs> That's a lot of man to hit you and come up underneath your pads. Sean Rogers makes an excellent play on this. This is this is sweet. I mean, Rodgers, well, he just kind of drops back. Look at him there. And whoa. I think Sean Rodgers was setting himself up as the spy. They were looking for that play. Pretty big spy. And that's that. Yeah, that is a big spy. And that's a that's a big compliment to a man the size of Sean Rodgers. If they're willing to drop you back and, and let you just kind of spy a guy as quick as Quincy Carter. Cowboys had two timeouts left, but they are content to let the time run out in this first half. They head to the locker room with a 7-6 lead over the Detroit Lions in the 2001 season finale. And there, Carter and Rodgers chatting about it. Yeah, Carter's saying, hey, that's a heck of a hit. Wade Wilson saying, don't, don't talk to him like that. 19-year veteran, Cowboys quarterback coach, and his pupil. Emmett Smith, 45 yards on the ground. He's 11 shy of 1,000. Ty Detmer's had a pretty good day today. He's 15 of 26, 148 yards, and one touchdown. Cowboys lead it by one. The Visa Halftime Report is coming up after these messages. The Visa Halftime Report is brought to you by Visa. It's everywhere NFL fans want to be. Emmitt Smith, just 11 yards shy of his NFL record 11th consecutive season with 1,000 yards as the Cowboys lead it by one. All right, Emmitt Smith, get it going today, young man. 
in from two yards out, out of the eye. Block went right, in it went left. Hey, pretty cool. Two-yard touchdown run. Cowboys up, seven zip. Ty Detmer, is he the quarterback of the future for the Lions, JB? 20-yard touchdown to David Sloan. Sloan tight end, got a ball game, PAT, no good. Seven to six, Cowboys on the road, leading the Lions at the half. Did you anoint him the quarterback? Uh, uh -oh. Jeff Garcia getting ready for the 49ers. Back. 56-yard touchdown down the left sideline. Just a straight-on takeoff for a fly route. Touchdown, 49ers up by seven. Garcia, he did this in Canada, does it so well. All these 49er quarterbacks have great mobility, can run with the football, throw on the run. This 60-yard touchdown to Terrell Owens, his 16th on the year, a career high for him. 49ers all over my Saints, 21 to nothing. Michael Strahan of the Giants, Brett Favre of the Packers. Strahan saying, show me some love today. All right, little fake reverse give up inside a sucker plate. 25 yards later, Armand Green entered the end zone. He's an alternate for the Pro Bowl, should have made it. Pack up by 14 to nothing. Kerry Collins back, I kill you. Skinny pole, touchdown. Was under review, challenge, came back. Feet were in, touchdown. Giants making the ball game. Packers now up. 17 to 10, though, at half. All right, Chicago, all it needs is a victory to clinch the NFC Central title with the win over Jacksonville, up by 13, that in the third. Tony Banks, get it going, came in late with the Redskins, had a pretty good year, not a bad year. Back set, good solid protection, guns this baby. Adrian Wilson reads it, the safety steps in front, and Howie, 61 yards later, touchdown. Dave McGinnis and these fighting Cardinals off and running. Thomas Jones, former number one draft choice out of Virginia, four yard touchdown run. All Cardinals, 17 to six over the Redskins and a pretty much empty stadium at the half. All right, and the Steelers looking for their first 13 win season since 1978. Little love here for Terry the Steelers. Uh, look at Chris's Bengals with 14 there points on go. the board. Chris picked the Bengals to run the Porsche Performance Report. And the Colts looking to save Jim Mora's job on top of the Broncos by 12. That at the half. Panthers and Patriots. Tom Brady continuing to guide the Patriots. Tom Brady now a pro bowler. They're up by seven as we come inside to talk about Dallas and Detroit. I'm send a little love to the former Gator uh, Emmett Smith and what he's done during the course of his career. 11 straight seasons, over 1,000 yards. That's simply remarkable. Shows how tough the guy is, how gutty the guy is. And, Howie, I've got to say that watching Larry Allen bench press 700 pounds was an intimidating thing. Larry Allen is, is by far the most dominant offensive lineman in professional football. And he's a quiet guy, a guy that doesn't like to deal with the media, but he is the most dominant offense. He flat out mauls people. And you talk about the quarterback in Detroit. One thing you can't do against Dallas, we found out with this defense, is you don't run on them. Detroit's made the decision to throw the ball, running 12 times, passing 26, and completing over 50% of their third down conversions. And this guy's done a nice job, Detmer. What do you think? Nice. No. Ooh, nice. Where's my card for nice? I forget. Euphemism. Nice. Yeah. That's a euphemism, euphemism. Yeah. for he's okay. Yeah, it's all right. Okay is like. How much did you bench right. press? I never bench press anything. It I'm seems not like we're at the end right. of useful huh. content being disseminated you're right now. So with that in mind, we'll not. let you know that the Visa <laughs> halftime will continue as we take you back to the second half of your game right after this. Visa is proud to celebrate the fans this season. Visa, it's everywhere NFL fans want to be. Playoffs are all about emotion. <sighs> I can't even explain it. There'll be a lot of wide eyes out there. I'll, I'll be one of those guys. I can't describe it. You're going to have to see it and feel it yourself to believe it. You know, you can't relax. I'm anxious. I, I can't sit still. You just got all these things running through your head. I just try to soak everything in. You might have some butterflies. Goosebumps everywhere. That's a good feeling. That's something to build on. It's playoff time. Back in Pontiac, Michigan. Dallas Cowboys leading the Detroit Lions at halftime by the score of 7-6. Emmett Smith just 11 yards shy of 1,000 for the 11th consecutive season. Tim and I will return with first half stats and highlights after these messages from your local station. You're watching the NFL on Fox. Back in Pontiac, Cowboys leading the Lions at halftime 7-6 as we welcome you back. Kenny Albert 
along with Tim Green, Quincy Carter, Cowboys quarterback, played his best game as a pro last week. Your thoughts on Carter in the first half today? Well, I think we've seen Carter make some nice throws, but I think the cast around him has not made a lot of great catches. So I, I think the Cowboys are going to have to give Carter, he's still young and he's still inexperienced, they're going to have to give him some more help if he's going to pick his game up and end the way he played last week. On the other side, Lions quarterback Ty Detmer, the veteran, has done a nice yeah. job spreading the ball around seven different well, receivers. you said nice. Howie Long said nice, and everyone's saying nice. Hey, don't be afraid, because Ty Detmer is playing a nice game, and you see excellent accuracy from him in his passes. He's made some good decisions. He's even scrambled a little bit, and then made some, and then he's got the one touchdown pass today. So Detmer has put the ball all over the field, and done it with, you know, done a really good job. So I don't think we have to be afraid. Hey, go ahead. Like Ty Detmer, he's pretty, he's having a pretty good day today. And Marty Morningweg certainly wants him back here in Detroit next season. Marty leading the Lions to just one win so far on the season, but they've used three different quarterbacks. Charlie Batch injured after he made nine starts. Mike McMahon started three games. He was injured. And now Ty Detmer starting for the fourth time this season. Howard brings it out to the 16-yard line. Marty Morningweg spoke moments ago with our Jennifer Hammond. All right, thanks, guys. And, Coach, you got the six points off the touchdown to Dave Sloan, but you've had a problem generating offense. What do you do to get it going in the second half? Well, really, I thought we our offense is moving, but right when we needed a time for a play, we drop a football or or can't get the football off. Uh, so we've got a possibility of scoring points. We just got to make the plays. How about your defense? Well, our defense is playing solid. We gave up the one big play on third down, which uh, worked into a touchdown. Uh, but we just have to execute this, this, this half. All right, thanks, Coach. Guys, back upstairs. All right, thanks, Jennifer. James Stewart on uh, first down, gained seven yards out to the 23-yard line. And you just saw the reason why I, I like so much. I like James Stewart so much. And that was that was an excellent run. And Stewart, a lot of people think he's just a north-south guy, but on that last play, you saw him break to the outside and then upfield for about seven yards. You see there, when Stewart starts and finishes a game, the Lions have a formidable rushing attack. When he's not in there and he's out injured, they're, they're pathetic. Stewart with 31 yards on seven carries so far today. Denver on second and three. Incomplete the intended receiver, Desmond Howard. And Desmond Howard is out there and he's an excellent return man, but Desmond Howard is not, and, and nor have I ever seen him in sync with the passing game. Well, that, that's that's a play where he needs to be up. Remember earlier we saw Johnny Morton and the timing on the outside pattern between Denver and Morton? You know, Denver has to throw the ball before the receiver makes the break. And he threw the ball, but Howard did not make the right break. Howard has caught only 10 passes all season. Three wide receivers, third and three. Short drop. Denver, Aaron went out for Paul Emanuel, who makes the catch. For a first down out at midfield, a gain of 27 yards. Well done by Bert Emanuel. Really well done. The coverage was there. Pat Dennis has the inside position, and so Denver launches this ball to the outside. And look at Bert Emanuel. He adjusts beautifully to that pass. Just like Marty Morningweek said to Jennifer, you know, they've been able to move the ball. They just have not gotten the points. And, of course, they've missed two field goals as well. Both from 51 yards out. Also, did not connect on the point after. He will pass that Johnny Morton. There, you see that? that that's, that's what they want to do. They want to throw that pattern to Johnny Morton, not to Desmond Howard. Watch Morton. He's just going to work up the field. He drives the coverage deep. Makes it look like a go-route. He comes back. And that, that ball's already in the air. Good timing between Morton and Denver. Eight of nine yards. Johnny Morton has become somewhat of a team spokesman appearing on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno twice over the last three weeks. Once via satellite, once in person. He was, uh, he was funny, too. He did a good job. Second down and one. 
Denver to the inside. It's Emmanuel has the first down. And Dennis made the tackle after a gain of five. What the Lions are doing right now is they're, they're starting to stretch the Cowboys' defense because they're throwing the ball to the outside, and they're going to force the Cowboys into playing some cover, too. They're going to force the Cowboys to take Darren Woodson and play him as a deep safety, along with George Teague, and then that's going to open up the running game for James Stewart. Lions move the chains, first and ten from the Cowboys' 35-yard line. Corey Schlesinger. Good second effort, a gain of two on the play. Darren Woodson made the tackle. And they, they pulled the trigger too early on the run. Because Darren Woodson, he sneaks up to the line of scrimmage. They, they've not got him staying in that cover two yet. So they're going to have to stretch and stretch. See, look, they start, it looks like two, but watch Woodson. He sneaks up, and then they're going to play a gap defense. Watch him attack the line of scrimmage. So everyone's in a gap, and wham, Corey Schlesinger has nowhere to go. Fifth tackle of the day by Woodson. Now second and eight. Off the play fake. Denver with time. Complete. Schlesinger out of the backfield. Brought down by Dan Wynn after a gain of four. Third and four upcoming. That win is just tough, isn't he? I mean, the tackles that he makes. Homegrown Texas product, right? Texas A&M. Yep. Aggie. He plays the plays the, the ball really well. He makes solid tackles after the catch. The National Defensive Player of the Year his senior season at Texas A&M. Yeah, third down conversions. Decker has been outstanding today. Third down. Three wide receivers on third and four. The pass is off the fingertips of the tight end, David Sloan. Well, watch the Cowboys come with a blitz. Denver can't do it any better than this. He reads it. He knows that Sloan is open because the linebackers have vacated. He puts the ball right in David Sloan's hands, and Sloan drops it. Watch the blitz. Here it comes, right? There's Izell Reese. There's, there's Sloan. He was wide open. All he had to do was catch that ball. Detmer hangs in, reads it correctly, makes the right pass. And a frustrating play for David Sloan. This is a 47-yard attempt. Hanson has missed twice from 51 yards out. That's the distance. He got it. So Jason Hansen gives the Lions their first lead of the day, 47-yard field goal. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Siemens. Siemens, global network of innovation. Back at Pontiac, Jason Hansen has given the Lions a two-point lead. That he got a 47-yard field goal early in this third quarter. Desmond, excuse me, Reggie Swint back deep for the Cowboys. Hanson's kick bounces into and through the end zone for a touchback. So the Cowboys will start from their own 20-yard line. A reminder, NASCAR returns to Fox next month. What an emotional season last year, Kenny, after Dale Earnhardt's death and then Kevin Harvick coming back and taking his car and being rookie of the year. I'm really anxious to see you know, what kind of a season he has after last year's great performances. And we got another rookie couple rookies right there Quincy Sean Rogers couple great performers in their rookie season. inside handoff to Troy hey. Everett very apropos to, to talk about NASCAR here in the Motor City as the Lions get set to move from the Pontiac Silverdome to Ford Field there you go so it's all kind of coming together isn't it it's like the Twilight Zone or something it all connects we've been here before
Ambrick gained one on the previous play, setting up second down and nine. Cowboys with three wide receivers. Darren Severini in the game. Boys keep it on the ground. Rich Emmett Smith out to the 28-yard line, a gain of seven. Tracy Scroggins made the tackle as Emmett creeps closer to that 1,000-yard mark. He now has 52, needs just four more. You know, I, I loved what Emmett Smith said this week when he was asked about breaking Barry Sanders' record. And he talked about the humility of a great, great player. And Emmett Smith said, you know, I think Barry Sanders is the best runner to ever play the game. And no, no offense to Emmett because Emmett is certainly one of the greats of all times. But I happen to agree with him. I, I played against Barry Sanders, and I, I never had more difficult time tackling a football player than I did Barry Sanders. On third and two, the pitch to Michael Wiley. And Wiley picks up the first down out to the 32-yard line. A gain of four on the play. And the Cowboys offensively here finally have gotten a little bit of a something going. But I still say, Kenny, this, if they're going to be successful, they're going to have to get a balance. They're going to have to, Quincy Carter is going to have to start to get the ball downfield. His receivers are going to have to catch that ball because we've seen a lot of balls that were catchable, not caught. And then that will open it up for Emmett Smith. Carter's completed only six of 14 pass attempts from the 32 yard line. Carter firing downfield. This one's caught. No problems this time. The Rocket Ismael. Well, well, 21 yards, excuse me, Ted. No, that's all right. Well thrown pass by Quincy Carter again. And, you know, Kenny, we've seen these kinds of passes thrown today and dropped. I mean, Rocket had one right in his hands like this earlier went right through his hands but on, th on that play there rocket does an excellent job runs the perfect pattern sits down in the zone and carter again you see the arm strength and the accuracy first down for the cowboys from the lions 47 and it bottled up and a combination of brian williams and jared devries no gain on the play getting back to rocket ismail tim who Made the first down catch on the previous play. Rocket finished second in Heisman Trophy voting back in 1990. Remember who beat him out for the Heisman? Ty Detmer. But that, I didn't, I didn't remember that. Rocket finished second in the vote. The Notre Dame. This time. Second and ten. Looking downfield, he throws. And Joey Galloway unable to make the catch. Yeah, well, a well-thrown pass by Carter. And, you know, Joey Galloway has not come through today. We've not seen him making the catches. Hey, let's go in the pits. Here's Larry Allen and Sean Rogers. And you see the movement of Sean Rogers actually gives Larry Allen a little bit of trouble. So Howie Long said, you know, Allen, obviously the most dominant player on the line in the National Football League. And I couldn't agree more. So the way you want to combat that is what Sean Rogers just did, which get to the edge. Use your quickness and get away from that power. Carter on third and ten, this time looking for Ismael incomplete. This is the same play they ran to the other side. It's just a post pattern. And you see it right here. Looked to me as if Ismael tripped on the defender and started to go down. Well, the Cowboys forced to punt. There's the Howard. Back deep. Mike Adore. With his own 40 yard line. Over it. Their catch called for by Howard at the 14 yard line, a 33 yard punt by Nord. Lions leading the Cowboys 9 7. Back in Pontiac, final game at the Silver Dome. Lions with a two point lead, 6.44 remaining, third quarter. Ty Detmer of the Lions are back to work starting from their own 14 yard line. Complete Avion Kaysan 
Out of the backfield, brought down after a five-yard pickup by Dexter Coakley. Well, one of the things we've seen from the Lions offense today is, is really good efficiency by Ty Detmer and no turnovers. Well, turnovers have been one of the things that have absolutely killed this Detroit team all season long. And so far today, zero turnovers. Look at that. Worst in the NFL, minus 17. But today, with none, they have the lead. They committed five last week with a loss to the Chicago Bears. Over the middle, Johnny Moore, nice catch, first down. Took a big hit out of the 30-yard line from George Keith. Yeah, that's, that is physical toughness and resilience by Johnny Moore. That's why defenses talk about this guy. Watch him break to the inside, and George Teague is going to lambaste him. Watch this. Wham! I mean, George Teague takes him down and out. Listen. Even George Teague got up and clapped for Johnny Morton after he took that hit and bounced back. So, you want to be a wide receiver? Yeah. You think, you think the pops that Jay Leno gives you on late night or something? You know, that's nothing. This Leno doesn't get physical about it. Maybe on Kayshawn on the carry. Darren Woodson made the tackle. And again, I, I, you know, I've said it all game long. I, I think if the Lions end up losing this game, they'll, they'll look back and, and say, you know, we, we probably could have won if we'd had a little steadier diet of James Stewart. Because Kaysan's given him nothing in the running game, where James Stewart has really put him in a lot of second and short situations. Second and ten, incomplete, looking for Corey Schlesinger. James Stewart bothered by that sprained right ankle. He's missed five games this season, including the loss to the Bears last week. Last season, Stewart was the Lions' offensive MVP, gained over 1,000 yards. He may be bothered by it, but he really hasn't shown it. He's, he's rushed for about four and a half yards of carry today. You see Detroit behind in that running game. There's that ankle brace. First down, I would, I would tend to have him in the, in the football game. This is third and ten. Denver dumps it off to Lamar Warren. Stopped about five yards shy of the marker by Dexter Coakley, so the Lions will punt it away. That's a good stand by the Cowboys' defense, and they're able to prevent this third down doing what, what I think they do really well, which is run to the football. Because it's a little dump pass, and... You know, Greg Ellis comes out of the pass rush as a defensive lineman and makes a tackle out on the perimeter to stop the first down conversion. Third part of the day for Jet, who won two Super Bowl rings as a member of the Cowboys. Swing from the 23-yard line. Eight-yard return out to the 31. Following the 40-yard punt, Bronco Levo with the tackle on special teams. Abbott Smith, future Hall of Famer, 12 carries, 51 yards. Remember, coming into the game, needed 56 to hit 1,000 for the 11th consecutive season, the only season in which Abbott did not rush for 1,000 yards. His rookie year, he fell just short, and he missed two games that season. Harry Sanders and Emmett have done it 10 consecutive seasons. From the 31, the pitch to Emmett. He's got it. He's over. 1,000 yards, and he picks up the first down. And he got it behind a devastating block by Larry Allen. And I can't imagine Emmett Smith would want to do it any other way. Watch the big guy come out in front. And he just buries the first defender. So Emmett Smith, 11 consecutive 1,000-yard rushing seasons. Barry Sanders, 10 in a row. Thurman Thomas, 8. Eric Dickerson did it seven times. A new football of the game, Tim, as Larry Demers, the referee, took the ball and flipped it to Jerry Jones on the Cowboys' sidelines. Potter complete. Joey Galloway down to the Lions' 35-yard line. This is the kind of pass that we've seen 
Quincy Carter throw all day long. They've not caught all of them, but it's a nice pattern by Galloway. He gets in the soft spot of the zone and watch Carter delivers a nice pass right over the over the front line of defense in the spot of the zone. Galloway makes the catch that he needs to make. 21 yard pass play from Carter to Galloway, setting up a first down on the Lions 34. Off the feet, reverse. It's set it. Fake the handoff to Galloway. And is out of bounds at the 29 yard line after a gain of five. Me. I don't know if Emmett was supposed to hand the ball off or not, just decided he was going to keep it. <laughs> that looked like it was supposed to be a reverse. The way he's smiling. You know, it does it looks kind of like a mischievous smile, doesn't it? Said I'm not giving up this one. Well, if you're Emmett Smith, hey, you don't have to. He scored the Cowboys only touchdown today. Bottom continuing to feed Emmett. He's tackled from behind at the 23 yard line by Sean Rogers after a gain of six more yards and again Larry Allen is the guy who's opening the hole for Emmett Smith watch Larry Allen look at him pull here and get the block on Chris Claiborne look at this wham I mean he just delivers a powerful blow to Chris Claiborne and seals off the defense so Emmett can get the first down. There it is right there. So the Cowboys starting to move the football down the field. Emmett goes over a thousand yards for the 11th time. Breaks Barry Sanders record. Whom he said this week was the best runner ever to play the game. Quincy Carter had a nice pass to Joey Galloway. And, and this drive is starting to look like the only other drive of the game where the Cowboys score. Not only is Emmett the first to rush for 1,011 consecutive years, he's the first to rush for 1,000 yards 11 times period. On first down, Troy Hendrick, as Emmett takes a rest on the sidelines. Hendrick's done a nice job this year. He's over 500 yards for the season. Oh, he really has. I, I think he has, he has shown that he will be a very capable replacement for the day when Emmett Smith no longer wants to or can do what he's done but it, Smith is remarkable I mean he just continues to play it at an exceptionally high level as I said it's, it's remarkable because of how many hits he takes it's a testament to how hard he works in the offseason Emmett up the middle down to the 15 yard line again of one we talked to Quincy Carter about his teammate Emmett Smith. Carter said, Emmett talks to me like a father. Remember Emmett critical of Quincy earlier in the season, felt Anthony Wright should have been starting. Yeah. And although Quincy Carter doesn't read the paper, he said Steve Karakoff, one of the coaches, called him up and told him about Emmett's quote in the paper and where Emmett said he thinks Carter's going to be a leader for a long time for this Cowboys team. Here comes the blitz on Carter. And Michael Wiley on third and one is grabbed from behind by Sean Rogers. And once again, I think you have to credit defensive coordinator Vince Tobin for the scheme. He had that thing pegged from the start. He gave an all-out blitz of the defense right up the middle. There was no one there to block Sean Rogers. And Tim, the third quarter has come to an end, but not before Emmett Smith goes over 1,000 yards for the 11th consecutive season. You're watching the NFL on Fox. Lions leading by two after three quarters here in Pontiac, and Emmett Smith adds his name to yet another NFL record. Yeah, and it's amazing that he does it right here in, in the house that Barry Sanders had so many great successes in. And I know as a former defensive player, he, he was the toughest guy to bring down. 33-yard attempt, and John Hilbert connects for the Cowboys. 
Dallas regains the lead on the first play of the fourth quarter. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL, an official airline of Super Bowl 36. By Miller Lite, grab a Miller Lite, it's Miller time. By Taco Bell, think outside the bun. And by GM, the car company in overdrive. The final quarter for the Lions and the Cowboys in this 2001 season. Dallas back on top. 10-9 following Hilbert's 33-yard field goal. Emmett, major player during that drive for the Cowboys. Desmond Howard from the goal line. George Teague with the special teams tackle after a 16-yard return by Howard. Will return to the Pontiac Silverdome after these messages. Detroit Lions defensive line coach Charles Haley won a record five Super Bowls, three as a member of the Dallas Cowboys. Haley's Lions trailing the Cowboys 10-9. The Lions start from their own 17-yard line. James Stewart takes the handoff from Denver and is tripped up after a gain of just one as we check in with James Brown in Los Angeles. Kenny and Tim take a look at how the Packers are ensuring themselves a home playoff game as Brett Favre hooking up with Corey Brown for 54 yards for that strike. Packers, if things stay as they are, they will host San Francisco. It is now 34-10, and Michael Strahan still looking for the sack record. Back to Kenny and Tim. Well, JB, that's going to be a tough record to break to bring down Brett Favre, one of the most elusive quarterbacks in the game. And you see there, if Green Bay does win and Chicago loses, then Green Bay would not only ensure a home field game, but they would get themselves a bye in the first round if Chicago loses. Lots of pass interference all the way. Dexter Coakley tying up James Stewart, the intended receiver downfield, and Stewart is slow to get up. Well, Ty Detmer is under pressure here, and he gets a scramble late. He's rolling out. And there's the pressure late. Number 52, automatic. And he just heaves First this down. baby downfield, and you can see Coakley here clearly shoves and Pete Stewart. Didn't take much, but that's all it took, and Stewart shaking up on the play. You saw Brett Favre working his magic. Remember, Detmer, a former backup to Favre, in fact, before the 94 season, Detmer, Brunel, and Kurt Warner we're all in training camp along with Brett Favre in Green Bay. From the 39 yard line. Denver escapes the pressure. And now throws it away. Denver with a little wiliness today. And he wisely throws that ball away. Again, I, he, I think he got a lot of uh, harsh and slightly unfair criticism for the seven interceptions he had in the Cleveland game. Some of them were dished up by receivers. One was a two minute drill, Hail Mary type pass. But you can clearly see that Detmer is focused today on playing very safe with the football. Still no turnovers for the Lions. On the 39-yard line, it's still the NFL record, Tim, for most interceptions thrown in one game is eight. Detmer threw seven in the game in Cleveland. And after the game, his dad, a legendary high school coach in Texas, said, what happened? You run out of time? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a great, uh, a, a great relationship there, obviously. His dad turned out two good quarterbacks and, and two really good people, too. Boy, Detmer, Ty Detmer. And good to see that Ty could joke about it. Yeah, and he's, and he's, he's playing well today. This is, I think, what the Lions expected out of Ty Detmer. Detmer forced to throw it away on third and eight. He was under intense pressure and took a hit from Pepe Zellner. I think that was a miscue between Detmer and Morton. Detmer read the blitz. Cowboys come 
and, and Detmer throws it to the vacated side. And it looks like the way Detmer's hitting his helmet, it looks like he misread it. It looks like it was supposed to be a go route. Either way, he read the blitz, and there was a miscue on the hot read. Hot is the read that you run, the play that you run, when there's a blitz in your face. Fans not happy that the Lions selected could not either attempt a 53-yard field goal or go for it, but a good punt and roll by John Jett, again pinning the Cowboys deep in their own territory. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. By Visa, it's everywhere NFL fans want to be. By Bud Light, for the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. And by Siemens, Siemens, global network of innovation. Well, the fans still excited, Tim. Final quarter of the final home game during a 1-14 season, but fans hanging in there. Sixth sellout of the season, close to 80,000 on hand. The last time the Cowboys were pinned down, Lewis and Ellis had the crowd going, and the Cowboys did nothing. They had to punt out of their own end zone. From the four-yard line, Cowboys keep it on the ground on first down. And a gain of one on the play for Emmett Smith. You know, Kenny, it was great talking with Quincy Carter. And I certainly see why the people around the Cowboys organization are so excited about him. He, he's done really good things on the field, but off the field, what a wonderful person. Of course, we asked him, I said, hey, he's the kind of guy you want to take him home with you. I said, hey, is there anything I could do for you? And he said, yeah, just tell my family back in Decatur and my girlfriend Gia that I said hello. So, Quincy, there you go. I'm happy to do it for you. Here's Carter out of the end zone on second and nine. Over the top to Troy Hambrick. And he picks up the first down out of the 16-yard line. And that's a sign of Quincy Carter maturing. Did you see how many reads he had to go to before he went to his check down? His line does an excellent job of giving him time. But he looks around the field, and there's nothing open except right here, this little check down pattern, and he has the patience and the time watching. He looks, he's looking, he looks right, he looks left, he moves a little bit. That's a really veteran play by a rookie quarterback. First and 10, 16 yard line. The pitch to Emmett Smith. Looks to cut it back inside, and then he is walloped nice. by Chris Claiborne. Wow. That looked like the Las Vegas special. We've seen some really good tackling today. A lot of it by the Cowboys, and a lot of it by the Lions as well. And Claiborne spends the offseason in the Las Vegas yeah, area. Says he likes craps. He likes to roll those dice. He rolled Emmett Smith on that play. Yep. He was a winner on that play. Second down and 11. There he goes. Oop. Slides to the 20 yard line. About six and a half yards shy of the marker. Carter, just a rookie. He is 24 years old. He spent two years playing minor league baseball in the Chicago Cubs system. And when you asked him yesterday if the game of football has slowed down at all for him, he said, well, it's like when I anticipated the fastball and then got the curve. It, it happened so fast out there, and it doesn't happen any fa faster for anyone than the quarterback because he has to see it all, and they're all coming to get him. Third and seven, Carter from the shotgun, steps to his right, and then throws. It's complete, but shy of sure. the first down, Rocket Ismael stopped about a yard and a half shy. Again, the Detroit Lions stifle the Cowboys' offense with a blitz. So Vince Tobin, we've seen him do it time and time again. Watch the blitz comes right here. Carter eludes it and is able to complete a pass downfield. But it's not the first down. And it's because the defensive coordinator, Vince Tobin, in a critical situation again, has successfully blitzed his defense. 
For Mike and Nora, back to punt for the Cowboys. On his own 15 yard line. Comes down at the 28 to Desmond Howard. Breaks one tackle. Six yard return out to the 34. Just over nine minutes remaining. Cowboys with a one point lead. More Silver Dome memories as we welcome you back one of the all-time greats, Barry Sanders. In November of 94, rushed for a club record 236 yards, including 200 in the second half and a 14-9 win over the Bucks. And then December of 97 against the Jets, Sanders became the third player in history to rush for 2,000 yards in a season and a 13-10 win. Rory Schlesinger doing his best Barry imitation as he gains 20 on first down. Schlesinger just busted that play loose. And we've talked about Corey all day long and his abilities to catch and run and block. And on this one here, it's just a pure run. Inside run, nice blocking by the Lions up front. And then you see the power mixed in in the end when T tries to tackle it. Lions in Cowboys territory from the 46. Best run of the game for Evian Pesla. Down to the 27-yard line, a gain of 19. Well, we said we hadn't seen anything from Avion Kaysan. We just saw it there. Marty Mordenwig said this kid's got speed, and we see it here. Look at there's the block by Schlesinger, so he creates the hole. Brendan Stey gets a block. And then Kaysan accelerates up through the line. Nice little spin move there. That was kind of a la Barry Sanders. Yep. Only Sanders is more apt to keep his feet after he did it. Still a nice run. Kaysan, a rookie free agent out of Illinois State, signed the mid November by the Lions. Kaysan again. Nowhere to go this time. That first by Jamal Brooks and then Michael Myers. Well, Kenny, speaking of Barry Sanders, and you just showed a couple of the great games he had. Watch this here. This is this is just classic. Look at right now, Harlan Barnett. I know how you feel, man. 42. You go one way, there he comes. No, guess what? He's back the other. I mean, Barry Sanders was just unbelievable in his running ability. Unbelievable. Uh, not one of the classic plays people still talk about in Detroit. Get back to Kaysan. He stopped about a yard shy of the first down by Jamal Brooks and Dewan Horthorn. Kaysan looking a little bit like a weapon here. I, I think he's got some confidence. And he's all of a sudden in the game plan and, and doing well. Looking to prove himself in this final game, the final quarter. A lot of decisions for Marty Morningwig, Matt Millen, and the staff during the upcoming offseason. Third down and one for the Lions. It's the fullback Schlesinger, and he has the first down. Down to the Cowboys' 16-yard line. So a nice combination of running. Started with Schlesinger and Kaysan, and then passing. And this Detroit offense that has struggled so much of the season all of a sudden looking uh, pretty efficient. Despite the 1-14 record, Lions have been involved in so many close games this year. They've lost five games by three points or less. And they have led after the third quarter now, including today, five times this season. And the key today, Kenny, again, has been no turnovers thus far for Detmer or the Lions. And only one penalty. Detmer looking end zone, looking Johnny Morton. Touchdown, Lions, and a penalty flag, a late flag after the catch. Lions did such a good job, Kenny, running the ball that the Cowboys had Darren Woodson up. They were playing the run. There was no safety help for Mario Edwards. Johnny Morton breaks to the inside, and Detmer throws another excellent pass. 
Denver's second touchdown pass of the game. Morton's first was a personal touchdown foul catch. On the defensive team for a 15-yard face mask on the touchdown. The touchdown is good. The penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. So Edwards grabbed hold of Morton's face mask. The Lions back on top. Here's Woodson. He's up. Watch him right here. They're, he's thinking run. It's first down. It's a play action pass. Sloan does a nice job of protecting. And there it is. Man on man. Johnny Morton beats Edwards to the inside. And Detmer throws it perfectly. Good going right, for two. How he, how he said it during halftime. He said, hey, Detmer's having a nice game. And he certainly is. And now the Lions leading by five. They botched the point after attempt earlier. We'll go for two. Lions two for five this season. Looking to extend their lead to seven. Decker escapes. And the pass was batted down by Brandon Noble, so the lead remains five points. Decker to Morton. Detroit on top lead. Mario Edwards was man to man on Johnny Morton with no help to the inside. And so Morton watching where he puts a triple move. There's the move, the straight up. There's a double move. And there's a triple move right there. And Detmer throws a perfect pass. Edwards is just off. He's got no help to the inside because Darren Woodson is up playing safety. And there's the there's the worm. The worm? The worm, the wave. Whatever you like. It looked like he was in water. The 15-yard face mask assessed on the kickoff. Booted into the end zone by Hansen. So the Cowboys will start from their own 20-yard line with five and a half to go. Trailing by five. Next week, the NFL's second season kicks off as the playoffs begin with an NFC wild card game here on Fox. Coverage begins with the pregame show at 11.30 Eastern. That's next Sunday, the NFC wild card on Fox. Green Bay out in front right now, so we know San Francisco will either go to Green Bay or Chicago. If Chicago wins today, they get a bye. San Fran goes to Green Bay. Philadelphia will host Tampa Bay. Carter's pass caught by a wide open Joey Galloway, a gain of 22 yards. One thing we've not talked about all game long is the way that the Lions quarterbacks have been playing. And they've been playing off. They've been defending the deep ball. They don't want to get beat deep. And so they're playing off as Todd Light was on that. And that's why we've seen this dig route. Watch it. See how far off Light is? So when Galloway digs to the inside, that pass has been there pretty much all game long. Penalty flags on first down. The thinking for the Lions defensively was that they want to make a young quarterback work his way down the field and put together a long sustained drive. Just don't give them the, the, the home run play. False start offense. Number 79, wow. five yard penalty. That's Dorsey again. Still first down. His third penalty today is eighth in the last three games. You know, I don't know if that wasn't a neutral zone or a flinch infraction. I think that was a bad call, to be honest with you. That's why they're kicking the flag. Because, you know, there's a new flinch rule where the defender is not allowed to flinch. And if he flinches first, This right here. Watch. Who moves first? The defender? Yep. That's a bad call by the officials. Good point. Now Carter on first and 15 had the pass batted at the line by Sean Rogers. Rogers has played another exceptional game today. He really has. He's, he's a guy who plays with great power and leverage, and it's the quickness that really separates him. You know, we talked earlier about the Chicago Bears and Keith Trailer and, and Ted Washington and the great size they added to the Chicago defense. And 
they get a lot of credit because they have been able to shut down the run effectively as a team. I think Sean Rogers is better than either of the two of them because he has the mass, but he also has the quickness. Eight tackles today, more tackles than any other down lineman in the NFL this year. Now second and 15. And the play is blown dead. More penalty flags. Prior to the snap, full start offense, number 79. Five yard penalty, still second out. Dave Campo, who started this game out sick, has got to be even more sick. Here's Chiron Dorsey right here. And there he moves just a little bit. And that's all it takes. And that was that was the right call by the officials. But I, I will tell you before that it was the wrong call. And it should have been a neutral zone infraction by the defender. You don't have to get in the neutral zone if you just flinch in front of the offensive player. Now second and 20. Potter takes off. And slides to the 42-yard line, back to the original line of scrimmage. Clock now approaching four and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. John Rogers was projected as a first-round pick to him. Cowboys, uh, most NFL teams had him projected as a number one, but then underwent ankle surgery. And it's not taken until the second round by the Detroit Lions. And then to talk to him. A couple of weeks ago, we spoke to him, and he's even more determined to come back next year, even stronger. That's the kind of attitude that this, this crowd here has got to love. This crowd's done a good job making it hard for the Cowboys to pick up blocks. Potter airing it out, intercepted by Marty Potter. The Lions came with the blitz again on this play, and every time they've come up with a big play on defense, they've come up with several. Watch it here. Here comes the blitz. It's a zone blitz. Carter feels some pressure. He launches that ball, and the other Carter, Marty Carter, makes an excellent catch. Marty Carter making his first start. As a member of the Lions, longtime Buccaneer, Bear, Falcon, comes up with the game's first turnover. And Denver hands it off James Stewart. After the 23-yard line for a gain of four with under four minutes to play. And the Cowboys call timeout to stop the clock with 3.49 remaining. Well, Tim, this is week 17, and... You and I have been together now for six years, and our crew, as always, has done a terrific job this season, led by producer P.T. Navarro, director Peter Blechner, our associate director Derek Manning, broadcast associate Robert Slawsby, the technical producer Kevin McRoby, pregame show produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy, the senior producer of Fox Sports is Bill Brown, the executive producers Ed Gorin and David Hill, and crunching the numbers for us today in the booth, Barry Smades and Joe Abramson, in the truck, Josh Weingrad and Eric Norton. Great job, everybody. Yeah, I know I certainly have been proud to be a part of Fox Sports this season and this, this crew that we have. They've all put a tremendous amount of effort into it, and I think people notice. I think people watching notice the difference. The overtime crew. We've had five overtime games this year. Denver off the play fake, rolling right, pulls it in, and is down at the 24-yard line. Many members of our technical crew have been with us for the last six years. We'd like to give proper credit where credit's due. Dave Bernstein, Bill Morello, Jay Clark, Gene Matthews, Steve Baldwin, Jamie McCombs, Jeff Morello, Greg Longstaff, Keith Dornellis, and Jim Overton. With 3.38 remaining here in Pontiac, Lions looking for win number two, leading the Cowboys. 15-10. And behind a, a, an excellent effort 
by quarterback Ty Detmer. You know, not only were the Cowboys hoping to finish strong, team, but Marty Morningwood said during the week, if we can beat Dallas, we finish two and two in our last four games, and that's a positive. Yeah, that's right. I, you know what, though? You have to credit Marty Morningwood. I really had a sense coming into this game that it was a more important game to the Dallas Cowboys. But Marty obviously had these guys well prepared. He kept his faith in Ty Detmer, and thus far, as we said, no turnovers by the Lions today. Terrific defensive stand by the Cowboys, led by Darren Woodson. And this is the payoff for all those times Woodson has been up on the line of scrimmage when they need to shut it down and get the ball back for their offense. Here he is, and look at the speed. He just blows right past David Sloan and makes his tackle in the backfield. And now the Cowboys are going to get a chance. Remember I said I felt like the Cowboys, it was a more important win for them to get. Darren Woodson kind of exemplified that yesterday when we spoke to him. He, he had some fire in his eyes. Now a moment ago our Fox box displayed the score from Carolina Patriots demolishing the Panthers. Carolina won their opening game this season in Minnesota. This will be their 15th consecutive defeat. So if, if Detroit wins this game they will not finish with the worst record and therefore not pick second in the draft. Carolina about to finish one and 15 on the season. There's speculation again on our pregame show this morning that George Seifert would be removed hey, as the Carolina the coach. Away. There's another possibility. A lot of names out there. Yeah. Jack puts it from his own 13-yard line. Swing. That's a bounce. Bounces out of bounds at the 40-yard line with 3.23 to go. Well, Fox Tuesday nominated for two Golden Globe Awards, including Best Drama and Best Actor, <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland. It's the most talked about show of the season, 24. Don't miss a new episode of 24, Tuesday at 9, 8 Central, right here on Fox. That, that show is a thriller. I mean, great twists, great turns. Off for a few weeks because of the holidays. A lot of people glad to have that one back. I know I am. And I know how excited you are about the X Files. And Mulder's possible return. Well, let's see what Quincy Carter does here. This is a great part of his education. This direct snap to Michael Wiley. So some trickery from Dave Campo late well in the season. Well played again by Sean Rogers, right in the middle of it all. And the Lions defense. I mean, this guy has been a force all season long. He just got right up under Brendan Stey, shoved him, and made the tackle. Dana one on the play. Here comes the blitz. Carter's pass was behind the intended receiver, Joey Galloway. Let's go back to the play before. You see that miscue. Watch, watch Rodgers here. Watch him work up underneath. Look at that right there. And that was a beautiful defensive line play. It was Ben Frick who he got under. I said Stye, or Stye is the guard for the Lions. The other number 66. Crowd on their feet. Third down and nine. Potter to the outside short. Intended for Darren Cheverini. And again, it's the blitz of the Lions defense that stifles this third down conversion. Watch Todd Light. Here he comes. He's coming up. There's too many guys, not enough blockers. Light looked like he got his hands on that ball. So the blitz against the young quarterback, very, very effective today for the Detroit Lions defense. And now the Cowboys will go for it. Fourth down and nine with 2.42 remaining. Fans on their feet here in Pontiac. They better hurry or they're not going to 
to get this off. They didn't. And they have no timeouts remaining. They used all three of their timeouts on defense to stop the clock. Delay game, offense, five yards, still fourth down. A helpless feeling for Dave Campo and Quincy Carter as the Cowboys could not call timeout. And now they send out the punting unit. I guess Dave Campo hoping that after the punt, they've got the two-minute warning that'll stop the clock and then maybe against hope against hope that his offense will have a few spare seconds on the clock and get the ball back if his defense can go three and out. And they must go three and out. Yes. No timeouts remaining. Absolutely. And if they do, they'd have some time. And I guess if you have the speed of Ismael and Galloway, you think maybe that's a better, a better chance than going for it now. Marty Morning we're calling timeout just to make sure his special teams know the situation. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to want to play. They're going to want to play with their regular defenders out there and watch for a fake punt. So you're going to see not the normal punt return team, but the defense out there. Well, now the offense has come back on. Oh. So the Cowboys will not punt. No. Oh. They changed their mind. They did a quick calculation and figured their odds are better on fourth and 14. I certainly would roll Quincy Carter out because if the Lions hold true to form, they're going to come with the blitz. That's what they've done all day long in critical situations. They brought heat on the young quarterback. Cowboys must get to midfield for a first down. It comes. They protected him. Rocket is by Broke it up. Well, we said all game long that if Quincy Carter was going to repeat the success he had last week against the 49ers, he needed a lot of help. He needed his big receivers to make big plays. And here, Rocket Ismael gets this ball. It's in his hands. And he's not able to bring it down. The Iwoma makes a heck of a play. That ball never got set in Ismael's hands. Watch it. The ball stays on top of his hands. So now the Lions with 2.36 remaining will run one play and then let the clock run down to the two-minute warning. Gene Stewart down to the 32-yard line, a gain of four. Dexter Copley made the tackle. We'll not see another play until after the two-minute warning as Detmer heads to the sidelines. Troy Detmer's family watching down in Texas certainly has to be happy and proud that he ended the season kind of rinsing the bad taste of his earlier performances out of his mouth. Fine job today. Detroit leading 15 to 10. Worth a two-minute warning. Good news, bad news day for Emmett Smith. He reaches 1,000 yards for the 11th consecutive season, but his team trails by five. Two minutes to go, fourth quarter. Cowboys with no timeouts remaining. actually gamble they bring both safeties up everything is pinned down to the inside and James Stewart has another fine run clock operator never started the clock as if the Lions have not had enough problems this year they're looking to run out the clock and it did not start 138 But it will not matter. Cowboys with no timeouts. Sixty-nine yards on the ground for Stewart. 
as the Lions are within a minute 22 seconds of their second win of the season. Netflix takes a knee. So the Lions will finish 2 and 14. The Cowboys 5 and 11. Dave Campo told his team he wanted them to treat this like the first game of next season. I would imagine they'll quickly try to forget that. Losing to the 1 and 14 Detroit Lions. But, you know, really, you have to give credit where credit is due. Ty Detmer had a fine day today. 24 of 40, 242 yards, two touchdown passes. And Vince Tobin, I think, did an excellent job with the Detroit defense. We had an excellent effort from Sean Rogers in the center of the field. And they blitzed when they had to blitz, and they came up with the big plays and a lot of pressure on the young quarterback, Quincy Carter. So Matt Millen's Detroit Lions win their season finale. They win the final game ever here at the Pontiac Silverdome by the score of 15-10 over the Dallas Cowboys who finished with a record of five wins and 11 defeats. Tim and I will return to the Silver Dome to wrap up the Lions and the Cowboys right after these messages. Lions over the Cowboys this afternoon by the score of 15-10 for Tim Green and Jennifer Hammond. This is Kenny Albert saying so long. We throw you to Dick Stockton for the Packers and the Giants. A record tying 2-14 and 14 finish is nothing to boast about, but they did finish with a win. The players are feeling pretty good about themselves right now. and We've got to keep that feeling going into the offseason and into next year. Is this your little post-game celebration for yourself? Heck yeah, I'm celebrating. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm celebrating. It means a lot. We try to give these fans what, they, what they've been asking for all year long. And to be able to finish it up with a win, that's, that's what it's all about. The win was nice, but they must take the bad along with the good. As Emmett Smith ran his way into the record books when he rushed past 1,000 yards for the 11th straight season. But it knocked Barry Sanders out of top spot in the process on what used to be Barry's turf. Passing here in, Pont in Pontiac, being able to get 11 consecutive um, it's a nice feeling. It's a very nice feeling. Uh, I wish B. Sanders could have been here. I know he probably was out there watching or something like that. I call him when I get to the house. However, the home team set some records of their own. David Sloan caught his seventh TD of the year, tying him with Gail Codgedill for the most ever by a Lions tight end. And Johnny Morton's 77th catch of the year gave him 1,154 yards on the year, a career high. And that's something we're celebrating in style. It's good, uh, personally, to, to do something positive despite such a, you know, a, a tough season. Um, it's, it's not quite as sweet because we didn't do as well, but just because I try to work so hard and set a good example, it's, it's personally rewarding. Uh, that was news to me, and uh, it's definitely uh, something that now I can sit back and say that's great. I obviously had no idea. Also let the record book show that they finished with an overall record of 146 wins, 119 losses, and two ties. And after this game, many of the players went around and shook hands with the fans who felt this 146th win was just as special as any of the others, although it came at the end of their worst season ever. Fellas, here's to better luck in your new home. I'm Trevor Thompson for your Detroit Sports Report. Trevor, thanks a lot. Trevor a lot. Tie. He looked nice, and I, yeah, a lot more. Their second win of the season as the team sends the Silverdome out in style. And for the final time this year, we bring in our Lions analyst Rob Rubick to break down the X's and O's to find out just how the Lions were able to double their win total. The fact that the Lions doubled their win total in one game, that's a scary thought. But whether it was for pride or future job considerations, the Lions put up a pretty good effort against the Cowboys. And for once, the good plays seemed to outweigh the bad. Let's take a look at some of these plays that I'm talking about. Matchups are key in the NFL, and this time the Lions get the matchup they're looking for. David Sloan against Dexter Coakley. Coakley highlighted here has man-to-man -man coverage against David Sloan. Sloan's going to get held up for a little bit at the line of scrimmage. He's going to run an angle and up down the sidelines. There's the path he's going to take. Detmer gets outside. Brendan Stye does a pretty good job of blocking Myers, giving Detmer enough time to find Sloan going down the sideline. Now here's where the matchup really pays off. 6-6 six, six Sloan against 5-10 Dexter Coakley. Touchdown Lions. 
What Rubik giveth, he shall also taketh away. After a good play by David Sloan, this is not so good. The Cowboys are going to bring two inside backers, which makes David Sloan hot. Ty Detmer does a good job on a three-step drop. Right here, the Cowboys man-to-man -man across the board. Hawthorne, the other corner, has to come all the way across to pick up Sloan. He's open, should be a first down, through his hand, kills a drive. They have to settle for a Jason Hansen field goal. The game-winning touchdown by Ty Detmer happens for a few reasons. Number one, the interior of the offensive line stonewalls the inside pass rush. Jeff Backus, along with David Sloan, do a nice job of running their men up the field, giving Detmer a lane to step up into, deliver the ball, Johnny Morton touchdown. Closer look right here. Johnny's going to come up with the double move. It's not too effective on Edwards, the defensive back, but it does freeze him. He gets a little bit flat-footed as Johnny runs by him with speed. He gets the touchdown pass. And Johnny, it's not that Jay Leno didn't have enough material. Now you give him the kick worm. Here's the final defensive play ever for the Lions at the Pontiac Silverdome. They're going to blitz. Four rushers coming to the strong side. It's a zone blitz. Sean Rogers is going to drop off from his defensive tackle position. But the Cowboys do a nice job of picking it up. A pretty well thrown ball by Quincy Carter, but a better job by Chidi Wama. A closer look. Ishmael never turns Chidi's hips. He never opens them up, allowing Chidi to jump down on the route and does a better job here of focusing on the ball as Ishmael is, and he strips it. Kudos to number 40, Chidi Awama, seals the victory for the Lions. So the win against the Cowboys was nice, but the only immediate effect it has, it slides the Lions from number two to number three in April's NFL draft. But before we can even start worrying about the draft, there are more pressing issues that face Morning Wigan Millen, and that's filling a lot of holes this team has. They need to begin the evaluation period and get very busy in the free agency market if this is going to be a better club come next July. I'm Rob Rubick for your Detroit Sports Report.